Fox. <laughs> it's going to be okay. It'll be all right. Today was about as pissed off as I think I've been in probably 18 years. Mm hmm. I know. He almost burned up my instant messaging thing. Almost shut down. Luckily, I've had a few hours to calm down. You sure, certainly type the F word fast. I will say that. <laughs> it's like, bing, you know, it makes that noise. Bing, 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 bing. Damn. <laughs> Met with my builder today. Uh huh. Love the plants, right? They went a little over budget. Well, how much? Excuse me just a second. <laughs> <laughs> well, how can they go over budget on something that's not built yet? The plans. If they build it as he asked, he's dying. He's killing. Don't do that. Please don't kill yourself. Well, that's really purple. Yeah, please stop. I tried several times today to strangle myself. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. It'll be fine. No, it won't be fine. All right. Do I have a... Uh... Okay, I have audio. Yes. I gave it to you before. Uh, okay. Let me start. Yeah, I have nothing else to go over. It's an absolute waste of time today. You don't want to talk about that? No, I know. No. Okay. It'll make you feel better. No, the hell it won't. <laughs> You don't get it out in the it open. Up. I've already called because it's the same builder that Dewan is using. Mm -hmm. She goes, from day one, she said, you want to use this builder? He knows what he... And then today she goes, I told you not... Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she told you not to use him? I swear to Jesus as I'm standing here. I try oh, to remember... She did her, not I remember you. her telling you to use him. Exactly. Yes. And her reason... Well, you know, I knew this would happen in case you got mad at him. You'd blame me. I went, you sold me on this guy from day one. She did. The I should have gone with my gut and not hired a builder with a floaty eye. <laughs> that can't be good. Are you want six or nine bedrooms? You don't need that. You don't have to get the numbers. You can tell percentage-wise. I, I don't want to even say anything else about it. Okay. Let's just do news and maybe I'll forget. I may drink. A lot today. I can believe it. <laughs> well, you're not roped into anything. No, I mean, I can. I went back. My throat hurts. Yeah. <laughs> Oddly enough. Uh, let's just do news. Okay. <clears throat> you went back. I don't even know what I was going to say. I've been so. What's the word when you're rattled for the day? Right. Discombobulated. Yeah. That. All day. Mm hmm. I just I, I put tennis shoes in my bag. Why? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know what Did I bring them with you. Yeah. Yes, they're right back here. <laughs> Brand new and still got the tag on them. Look, <laughs> I don't need them. I have no reason for them to be up here. They're in my bag. By the way, I got these at Target. Ooh, six nice. bucks. You're wow. kidding? Yeah, it's good that you're saving money. These what are they on sale? I suppose. They were marked uh, the price on the tag. No, they were marked twenty seven dollars. When they rang up, they were like six seventy four. And it was uh it was the right SKU number. So it's not like, you know, they rang up Well maybe they're on clearance and they just didn't get marked down on the tag. Yeah. I'm gonna go back and buy some more. Me too. These are good shoes. I don't know why they're in the back. I have no idea. I shaved twice today. <laughs> <laughs> so you're smooth. I like halfway through it. I'm going, damn, this, this must be a new ra I already shaved. <laughs> <laughs> You're not roped into anything. I know. It's just the fact that I spent this much time in trouble and I got to close on the land. I'm trying to do a, a one. You're wearing yourself out over something that's not a done deal. Well, I know, but I'm trying to do a one-time close where you close on the land and the house at the same time so I don't pl pay two closing costs. Right. That's a lot of money in that. And now it's been so long, and i got to rework the, the whole cost. On, on it. <laughs> <laughs> You're really going to hurt yourself, but it's just the news. Okay. <clears throat> and Reed and Bob are calling me for some inane reason today, and i got no time to talk to either one of them. And you kind of want to be nice to them because you work yeah. for them, but I don't really care. 
Mm. We got to talk to you about this bobblehead issue, Russ. Uh, oh, that! Oh, that was Scott. <laughs> <laughs> was that it? That was another one. <laughs> Very important. Please come in early. Ree called me, and then twenty minutes later, Bob calls me. Then Bob catches me on the instant messenger because it shows when you're online. Now I know why you never turn yours on, Dan, because you don't want anybody to bother you. <laughs> we really need to talk about this bobblehead. Plus, we got a new client that we want to link up with it. Fine, do whatever you want. I'm just getting a bunch of cash off this. I'm tired of everything I do going to charity. Now I got a house to feed. <laughs> I've got a whole compensation structure laid out for that. For the bobblehead? Yes. Perfect. Good. Do you really? Yeah, I really do. Is a percentage thing? More or less. Yeah. Upfront fee and points. Points. Something like that? Something like that. All right. I'll go over with you. Okay. I'll go over with you later. My makeup or that made more dollars over. <laughs> I didn't tell you so you could run your mouth. I don't know. You ready for an intro? Oh, let me do this. I'll read this. It's just, I got this letter. It's, it says to the listeners, so I'll read it. This is uh, from, is this the right one? No, that one's yours, Everett. Everett's getting flowers from women up here. Oh. Just a client that wanted to thank me for something. Yeah. Do clients normally send you flowers? No. Yeah. Is this client a nut? No, no, not at all. Just thanking me for a job well done. Did you get them off? I can't really comment. Well, we don't know who it is. Yeah, th things went well. Okay, good. All right, here's the one I was looking for. This is from uh, Vicky Monier. Her uh, husband was a fallen police officer in, uh, was it White Settlement? White Settlement, yes. yeah. yeah. Uh, back at uh, the end of uh, April, I think it was. This was addressed to the listeners. That's why I'm reading it, because it's for you. It says, uh, thank you for the contribution to the children of Scott Monier. We have purchased a golf cart. We give them enough money to get a golf cart? I don't know. The golf carts cost. They're high. What do you need Thousands. a golf cart for? Golfing. Uh. <laughs> we have purchased a golf cart, and the girls have enjoyed it greatly. They also took a trip to Toys R Us. Now, from your listeners, is a blessing. That's signed Vicky Monier and her girls. So there you go. <clears throat> Maybe that's something the girls can use you use to get around. I don't know. Maybe with only one parent, she can't get them everywhere at once. They need I don't know. In the neighborhood. I don't know. Wish I had a golf cart. <laughs> what, would, what would you do with a golf cart? Know, last time we had one, we got drunk and drove it on Skillman. <laughs> True. <laughs> you seen my ball? It's a title. <laughs> Bounced a long way. That's, I think that's the drunkest I think I've ever been with Dan. We were at my apartment complex. I've told you this story. But it's a dandy one. It certainly is. We get drunk, and I went, hey, our house starts the golf cart downstairs. So we take a screwdriver, we get in there, we start, and it's a motorized one. Oh, okay. It's the one the maintenance guys use. Right. It's parked right out in front of the complex. We get drunk. And the complex was had uh, like a great big circle. I don't even know how to describe it, but it's just a circular thing with it. circular drive. Yeah, but it was also a city street. Yeah. So we got on that. Then we got out onto Skillman, <laughs> and now <laughs> this is like eleven thirty at night. This thing doesn't have lights on it. We're sitting at the light at Skillman and Adelita or something like yeah. that. And cars are pulling up next to us, and Dan's going, "This golf course sucks." <laughs> <laughs> then we took it back, parked it in the pool. In the, <laughs> in the pool. Actually, over the pool. Oh, the pool. There was scaffolding out back, so we oh. just kind of put two scaffolds down and drove it and left it sitting on the top of the center of the pool. Yeah. <laughs> Andy story. Yeah. You would have gotten DW. Would that have been DWI? Absolutely. Oh, no. even, even in a really? golf cart? Yeah, absolutely. Why? Any kind of motorized vehicle, even a boat. I saw the funniest DWI video today, incidentally. There was this lady, this black woman. It was on the video, and they were asking her. You know, Why is it important that she's black? Does that make the story funnier? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> anyway, she's on the video. <laughs> oh, you asked. <laughs> she's, on, she's on the video, and they're trying to explain to her her statutory warnings, and she she keeps stopping them along the way. 
If you've been uh, pulled over for driving any sort of automobile or watercraft, what's a watercraft? <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. What's a watercraft? Well, a watercraft would be any type of boat. I wasn't in a boat. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we having to watch the tape? Uh, determining whether or not I want to take it to trial. Oh, okay. I thought maybe it was a training tape. No. <laughs> Actually, it's more, more of a comedy. Uh, I like to see that one. You bring it up? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, Is it a public record? More, more or less. If you don't take the case, we can listen to it. Uh, All right, never mind. You. Okay. You ready for news? Sure. All right. <coughs> What a conflict. What's the what? <laughs> yeah. I don't even know boat. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> Go ahead. You're on the air. Hey, Russ. How'd you enjoy riding your new scooter? Oh, yeah, the bike. <laughs> Hello? It's a dandy fat boy. Is it? Yeah. Very nice. How many miles did you put on it last night? Well, let me think. It was parked in my driveway, and I rode it into the garage eh, about six and a half feet. That's it? Yeah. Why? Oh, man. What so was it? Oh, so you don't want to ride without a helmet, and what? you're not going to be seen in public with the great kazoo. What helmet. did I tell Jason yesterday? Yeah. Well, yeah, you had to have the full face. Right. Because, right. first well, of all, I'm, I'm not wearing the great kazoo helmet. I'm not riding without a helmet. Mm -hmm. And you they run around your neighborhood slow. No. Yeah. No? Okay. I'm not getting on a motorcycle without a helmet. I told him. So I sat and I looked at it in the garage. It sounds great. I bet it does. I can't wait to ride it. I'm exhausted <laughs> from not riding it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I hope you get your helmet soon. Yeah. I thought Jason was going to take care of that yesterday. I told Jason weeks ago, because I had to wait on this Harley, because since I was getting it free, mm -hmm. it had to come from Harley Davidson and not from Harley Davidson of Dallas. Right. So they can keep the stuff on their showroom floor. And I understood that. I went, I'm cool with that. Sure. I went, here's what I need. I need boots, and I need a full-face helmet. A little half helmet that didn't give you enough protection, and I'm not wearing it. Mm -hmm. It's too ugly. <laughs> if you, I don't care how cool you think you are with that thing on. You're not. <laughs> you're not. <laughs> no. It looks like a black push button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. And I get home. And there it is. It's parked out back of the house. Yeah. Beautiful, fat, black boy. Mm. Black, like fat that. boy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm. Sorry, I was thinking about Huntsville. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> and there's a bag on the back of it. I went, great. The hel helmet's there. I'll go in. I'll put on some tennis shoes because I don't see any boots. I'm good to go. It's one of the half helmets. I started it. Sounds great. Slick. Yeah. Looks like it'd be powerful. Mm. Mm. Sounds powerful. Mm. Well, bad. How is it from zero to six feet? Very smooth. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about putting a CB on it. <laughs> if I try that far again. Yeah. <laughs> Don't want to get lost. <laughs> no. Call your base station. Yeah. Radar traps behind the lawnmower. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, the hotline's ringing, Dan. I got money that's uh, probably Jason or Bob or someone else that's insignificant right now in my life. Let's just start news while he's doing that. Okay. Ready to go? Yep. All right. All right, 327, J.D. Ryan's on the new 105.3 FM Talk with us. Brought to us by Nextel, 1-800-NEXTEL-9. It's how business gets done. And also by Cuervo. All right, here we go. Hold on a second. Do we get a break before we start? Okay. All right, good. All right, it is uh, Wednesday, June 12th, 2002. Birthdays today, a blues guitarist. Kenny Wayne Shepard turns 25 years old. Marv Albert is 61. Jim Neighbors, 72. And Daddy George Bush is 78 today. Tens of thousands of people in the Denver area watched and waited nervously as firefighters raced to battle the massive wildfire that continues to uh, surge out of control toward their homes. Already burned down 21 houses, threatening another 2,500. Uh, the sheriff's folks in uh, Douglas County urged 13,000 people in the town of Sedalia, 20 miles south of Denver, to leave, but stopped short of evacuating them. 
Cops planning for protesters as the Catholic bishops from across the U.S. gather in Dallas starting tomorrow to confront the sexual abuse scandal rocking the church. As many as 500 people, including bishops and retired bishops, will meet at the Fairmont Hotel tomorrow for a three-day summit on sexual abuse in the mm-hmm. Catholic Church. They come from 195 dioceses all across the country, and uh, their goal is to forge a plan for handling cases of clergy misconduct. I like the way they're dancing around this. They don't call it what it is. They call it sexual misconduct. Sure. It's child molestation. That's what it is. You grab children. You play with their cranks. You stick things through the little confessional hole. That's child molestation. Mm. They don't want to address it. Or Saturday night at Texaco. Mm. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't want to call it what it is. Because if you call it sexual uh, misconduct, it just sounds like a problem. Somebody has an issue in their life that we can help them with. Right. Not just a flat-out pervert that gets off by playing with little boys. Well, it's consistent with their method of just shuffling these guys from diocese to diocese. There was a really good story in the morning news today about it, but I didn't read it. Anybody? It looked like a, glanced at it, it looked like a good headline. Mm. <laughs> Let's say You didn't read the front page of the morning news? I just don't remember the headline. Jesus. That's where I got this. Uh, two-thirds of bishops let accused priests work. You didn't read this? Yes. Did you read the whole story? Yes. Uh-huh. Why is the headline so intriguing? Because it's really big. It's oh, the front man. page. Oh, I got that. <laughs> I just did that story. Two-thirds of bishops let accused priests work. Did you say that? Mm-hmm. You didn't say anything about that. You just said they were in town there trying is. to decide what to do. This says they went ahead and let them work. We've See, known this. this. We've known that. I get, I get that every day. I get and it. this is a front page every day of a major metropolitan newspaper. Got it. You didn't even address the fact that two thirds of the bishops let accused priests work. No, well, we kind of knew that. that no, they, I didn't know how many it was. Oh, the numbers. I think he implied it. Who? JD. When? Never. No. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, counselor. <laughs> Be sure to hire you. Just go ahead. ahead. Oh, continue. Okay. The uh, the Bible said God destroyed Sodom with fire and brimstone. Some people who live on Sodom Road are now hoping to, uh, to petition to change the name of the road, actually, to Addition Lane. The funny part is this comes from Clinton, New York. The biblical city, cities of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah were known for their sinfulness and for incurring the wrath of God. So the folks that live on Sodom Road don't, don't like it at all in Clinton, New York. So you really knew that it was already two-thirds? There's roughly two-thirds of the top U.S. Catholic leaders have allowed priests accused of sexual abuse to keep working. Mm-hmm. You know it was two-thirds? Mm-hmm. When did you know that? I pulled that story today. I just haven't read it yet. Where is it? It's it's on the printer. You want to see it? Why wouldn't you along with that? A, Along with a story about, a, uh, I believe it's a C-130 that's crashed, crashed in Afghanistan. And you started with birthdays? Yeah. I thought that was an important blues guy. Can he wean somebody? Yeah. <laughs> Who? Kenny Wayne, somebody after. Oh, Kenny Wayne Shepherd? Yeah. Does he have a birthday today? Yeah, he's uh, 25. Did I tell you I banged his daddy's uh, girlfriend one time? I told you that, didn't I? What? Yeah. No. Kenny Wayne Shepherd's daddy's girlfriend? Yeah. No, I didn't know that. A little known Russ Martin trivia there. I think I've told that before. How old is Kenny Wayne today? 25. 25. This was back in 87. How long ago was that? Oh, 25 14, years. 14, 15. Hey, no, 20. <laughs> <laughs> About 14, 15, 15 years. 15 years. Yeah, okay. So he was 10. Yeah. He was, uh, Kenny Wayne's dad was dating one of the girls that worked at the Eagle. Christy Evans. Oh, I know, yeah. I remember. Oh, oh great cans. Yeah. <gasps> she was the one I thought was doing a drop of turd on me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, she was the one. Raining. She was the one that would sit on top and go... <laughs> Which obviously takes all the magic out of the uh, the event. Yeah. Because you're sitting there pre- preparing yourself to have a little squishy Cosby kid <laughs> land on your leg. <laughs> Yanni railing away in the background. Yeah. Luckily, that's not what happened. Mm. She was just <clears throat> finishing up. But. Yeah. But I didn't know that at the time. Yes. All I know is this little Elvis voice in the back of my head was going, oh, man, she's going to drop a load on your leg. <laughs> 
If the NBA uh, <laughs> uses instant replay next season to review last second shots, the rules will be different than for the NFL. Oh, thank God. They're going to do instant replay? Yes. Oh, that'll make basketball much more exciting. <laughs> there, would, there would be no challenges from coaches, no lengthy stoppages of play. The new rules would uh, deal solely with instances in which there was a question whether a shot was released before time expired at the end of a quarter or if the, the uh, player's foot was actually on the three-point line. Thank God. It's safe. When does this start? I, it's I, next season. I wish it was next season now. When does next season start? Is it close? Uh, no, it just ended. So it's Did it? When's next season? Ever? Uh, it'll be in October, I think. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah? That and Christmas. <laughs> it's always slow coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's almost been an entire month since the last Country Music Awards show, so there's another one. It's tonight on Country oh, Music Television, Flameworthy Video Music Awards. She's going to drop a load on my leg. Kathy, I think it is it no, Jimmy, whatever, the chick that does the voice of Peggy Hill on King of the Hill. She's going to host it. Thank God. Yeah, voting for Flameworthy Video of the Year will take place. Flameworthy. Does this mean it? No, it's not. CMT, don't even say it. It'll Why? Be, it'll be on CMT.com during the show. And when the show ends, you can see the brand new Dixie Chick video called Long Time Gone. Mm. All this in one day. Mm. Basketball instant replay. Yeah. And now the CMT thing. And that two-thirds. Yeah, the two-thirds yeah, of the, the three. I can't even believe that they admitted that. I would, just, I, I, I would say, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, church spokesman did not dispute the results of the study. This was a study that the Dallas Morning News did for three months. Hmm. Which is the first of its kind and depicts a far broader pattern than has emerged this year in Boston. The Archdiocese's employment of known child molesters has made international news. Blah, 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 blah. I'm just wondering how much longer they would have covered this up had the media not crawled all over this. Forever. Sure. They had no incentive not to. And there are people saying it's been going on for hundreds of years now. So what's their yeah? What's their incentive to go up? You know what? This has been going on. Seems like somebody would have gone out of their way to say, you know what? If we're doing this is kind of a religion thing we're doing here. Yeah. Maybe we should stop. No, as long as they're going to get a, as long as they're getting away with it, why not continue? Why be in the business of of religion? Or just, you know, be in that if you're going to sit there and break commandments anyway. I don't get, I don't see how the two syncs up. Hmm. I don't know. Because not, obviously not everybody in the Catholic religion is a pedophile. So no. you think the ones that weren't would want to stop this. But they also don't want to bring shame to the diocese. So, or to the, to. They've already done that in the eyes of God. Thank you. Mm. But they don't want to bring public shame. What's so more important, public shame or the eyes of God? Thank you. And in Catholicism, it's there's almost this dual reality in which, for example, when you get married mm. for the first time in the Catholic Church, even if you get divorced in court, you have to have your marriage annulled through the church in order for you no longer to be married in the eyes of God. Otherwise, you end up with the person that you were married to, even though you're divorced legally, right. when you die and go to heaven. So. It's not a Well, rule. that kind of makes sense. I mean, if you're going to do the ceremony in church for a reason, then you should kind of erase it in church. No, really My can't. point is this is not a group of people that are going to race to the forefront to undertake some sort of sweeping change of a practice that's been oh, going on it. for hundreds of years. All right. Go ahead. Okay. When a woman went to her doctor complaining of headaches, found out she had a spider living in her ear. The arachnid had even spun a web in the woman's ear canal during her, his little brief stay. She uh, went to her doctor who had a brief explanation, said basically the, founder, the spider found itself in her ear and because of the temperature, it's ideal. He just spun his little web. The, the woman did not need surgery. This is the part I don't understand the story. The woman did not need surgery to remove the spider and was not injured. So I guess he just yanked it out. <laughs> yeah. There's a picture you want to see? No. I don't see. Of her ear. Oh, us. <laughs> I guess, you know, when you're sleeping, little animals crawl in there. I thought that's what earwax was for, to keep them out. No. Isn't it? No. What's earwax for? I don't know. Lubricate the uh, hair of the sides of your fingernails. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing. I don't know. Anyway. I it's thought the, the earwax was to keep bugs, to trap bugs so they couldn't get all the way in there. No. Do you, you have bugs trapped in your earwax? I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't your body have, like, normal defenses for bugs crawling in your holes? No, no. No, you're sleeping. Yeah. I think that's what it's for. No. Mm -hmm. Kind of like flypaper for the ear. I don't know. <laughs> Go ahead. 
Yes. They'll always have Paris. Now Rick and uh, Elsa have the top spot on the list of Americans' best screen romances. Casablanca, starring uh, Humphrey Bogart as saloon keeper Rick Blaine and Ingrid Bergman as his. Do love, I look any darker from love. being out in the sun all day yesterday riding the motorcycle? No, you don't. Okay, good. A little, actually, no. They are the number one uh, romance of the top 100 U.S. love stories, according to the American Film Institute. The rest of the top 10 are in order like this. Gone with the Wind, West Side Story, Roman Holiday, An Affair to Remember, The Way We Were, Dr. Zhivago, It's a Wonderful Life, Love Story, and City Lights. And here in cut number one, Matt Damon says the uh, action in his new movie, The Born Identity, <clears throat> is not gratuitous. Must be cut too. <laughs> you missed it today. He missed it yesterday. Uh, what happened? Ever. She called up, made him see she loved him because they've been "I love you, I love you" back and forth on the phone now. Really? Before they can hang up, say it, say it, there, say it. <laughs> I had no idea. Well, actually, I did. I called. We not one of those. What? We called this a long time ago. Yeah, but now they're actually saying the "I love you." Yeah. I was drunk when I said it. But, okay. And he's, he's invited her. I was drunk when I invited she's her. She's coming. Oh, when's she coming? For our entire vacation. She'll now, really? Uh, the that, whole first month of July. Now, well, there'll be a way out of this. You're devoting your entire... Uh-uh, I'm not leaving you any more messages on your answer machine. You're on your own this time. Tell tell Everett what you said. Jay, you already told me. Oh, okay. I'm sorry I missed that. Go ahead. So, what, cut in my plane? Shut up, Everett. The whole weekend. Shush. How more. many days? Cut. Number one again, if you want to. No, not number one. Number two, Matt Damon says the one of the, in the Born Identity is not gratuitous. It's not one of those movies where they go, okay, it's been five minutes, we got to blow something else up. It's a movie where you can actually feel the tension building, and it's kind of more like a Hitchcock movie. Matt Damon also says he was asked what it's like for him now to go, now these big studs, to go out in public. How many times <laughs> is that on here? I don't know. I get messed up in production, sorry. I live in New York, and I have no problem. I walk around. You know, I've never had a bodyguard or anything like that. I just kind of walk around, and I think it's kind of what you make it. You know, if people sometimes will see me on the street or recognize me and just see me walking around and as a, as a normal person, they don't freak out. They just kind of go, oh, hey. And then it's not that big a deal. And I always kind of talk about this example I heard of, of, you know, in the 80s when Michael Jackson and Bruce Springsteen were, the, you know, the two most famous guys in the world. Michael Jackson, you couldn't leave his house. And Springsteen, you might bump into at a bar down the street. And I, I, I think it's how much you create around it, I think, plays a huge part. Michael Jackson wants the attention. You don't do all that weird stuff to yourself and not expect people to look. He doesn't even look human anymore. Yeah. I heard somebody say he's actually now going to try to broaden his nose back out because it's too thin. He's going to go into the knife again to make it look a little more normal. It looks like he and um, who's the sister that got the surgery, too. Janet? Janet. LaToya. Jackson. And LaToya. Yeah. I don't think Janet. What did Janet get? Janet did too? Yeah. Well, Latoya is the one that looks like she's always sucking air into her nose. Yeah. <laughs> like this? I don't know how to describe it, so go like this. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that? Had the nostrils narrowed. And yeah, it looks like her and Michael had the same. Uh, mm -hmm. You think after her seeing what they did to Michael, she'd steer clear of that guy? It's really two of the worst nose jobs I've ever seen. Yeah. Great, now my ears are clogged up. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. In the, next, in the next cut, uh, Scooby-Doo is coming out this weekend. Freddie Prinze Jr. says at first he wasn't sure he wanted to play part of Scooby-Doo. When I initially heard the idea, I didn't want to be involved because I didn't think Hollywood could pull something this spectacular off. And it wasn't until I read the script that I realized just how fantastic this project was going to be. Did he just use the word spectacular? Spectacular and fantastic. Yeah. And Scooby Doo. I had to be involved. <laughs> and in the have, you, have you seen the previews for this movie? Yeah, I saw it today on Channel Eight. Yeah, <laughs> it'll do okay. I mean, they, you know, the kids will swamp out, to, or, you know, all run out to see it, and it'll do fine for a couple of weeks, and then they took out all the good stuff, the lesbian stuff. <laughs> yeah, double smoking stuff. Mm -hmm. A few little references. Ah, uh, cut the, the next one. Freddie uh, Prinze Jr. says he's probably the biggest fan of Scooby Doo. I've never met anyone who's as obsessed with comics and cartoons as, as myself. And over the last... Do you steal this audio off Channel 8? Mm -mm. Got it from Westwood One. Yeah. Because these are the exact uh, answers that he gave Gary Kogel. Mm. So obviously that wasn't an interview. They just sent him that. Yeah. Hmm. 20 years 
I've collected every single episode of this cartoon specifically. And there's over 300, and there's like 340 of them before they even remade it. And it was terrible. And they did this one version called The 13 Ghosts of Scooby Doo where they got rid of Fred and Velma and brought this little Puerto Rican kid named Rudy who was like 12 years old. And it was terrible. And I even have all those. <laughs> Maybe he'll commit suicide, too. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like he's got it coming. Yeah. And finally, uh, Sarah Michelle Geller says acting should be considered a challenge even when it's a cartoon. Some people looked at it and went, well, it's a cartoon. How hard is that going to be? But this is the most beloved cartoon, the longest-running cartoon. This is a series that people have so much emotionally invested in. And if we just walked through it, then where is the joy for the people watching it? Where is the fun? Where's the joy? I don't know. Scooby Doo coming to a theater near you on Friday. She's sitting on hers. Sarah, oh yeah, Sarah. Oh, mm. gosh, you know that's, that's a good one. Mm. <laughs> mm. You may want her on my fantasy. Oh, list. I was just about to ask if we need to adjust the list. Who's on my list? I forget from yesterday. Cameron Diaz, Jennifer Simpson, Jennifer Love Hewitt, Rebecca that's Romaine, Jessica Simpson. Oh, did I say? I'm sorry. Yeah. I've said Jennifer Jones right. tonight. Uh, Rebecca Romaine, Stamos, mm. and Charisma Carpenter. Hmm. She's kind of got that funky nose, though. Mm. I bet she's got a cute little fishy cat. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Most likely. Nah, I don't want her. I'm good with my list right now. Okay. Yeah. I may pick her up at some point. All right, good. <laughs> All right, don't forget about the second anniversary party. Texas Motorplex in Ennis is coming up Saturday, June 22nd. All day long, 3 until 10 o'clock. Our big... Uh, Parade going down there. It's going to be a lot of fun. Live bands, big toys, big drinks. Also want to win cash? Go to KYNG.com. Click on win cash. You get all the details. I'm J.D. Ryan on the talk that rocks Texas. The new 105. Four check on traffic. Jonathan Dodge at the controls of the new 105.3 FM talks. Right, Lightning. Why, thank you, Russell. This report brought to you by your local Mitsubishi Motors retailer. Check out the rugged Montero Sport, College New Glock, or the Sporty Eclipse. It's time to wake up and drive. Also, you can experience Italian like you never had it before. Come to Carabas and taste the thrill. Of the grill in Dallas, southbound I 35 Simmons at the Royal Lane exit. Right exit lane is blocked with traffic slow coming out of Farmer's Branch. That's due to an accident. Also, there's a lot of glass in the roadway, so people are slowing down trying to avoid a flat. On northbound 121, just past the 183 split. One lane is blocked for road work and further north from Hall Johnson Road to William D. Tate. Traffic puddles down to one lane. That is causing you back up to Glade Road. Also, overhead sign work. Westbound I-20 and Kelly Elliott. That one blocked in the two right lane. This report brought to you by your uh, participating local Nissan dealers. Nissan's your one-stop shop for fast, convenient service. And express service 30 oil and filter change in 30 minutes. Twenty-one ninety-five plus tax. See your participating Nissan dealer for details. That's traffic. I'm Jonathan Dodge in the new 105.3 FM's White. Thank you, Jonathan. All right, KYNG, Dallas, Fort Worth weather. Partly cloudy. Should be about 75 for the overnight low tonight. Kind of a cool front moving in tomorrow, bringing some showers. Should be 91 degrees for the high. We have 91 now at the Talk That Rocks, Texas, the new 105.3 FM Talk. Dan, what happened with uh, Bible Man? Never heard anything else. Uh, I attempted to set that up, and it, at first when I called them and said I was with CBS Radio, the church was excited. Mm -hmm. uh, they put me in touch with uh, Willie Ames' people. Yes. I called and chatted with them for a bit. Did you talk to the Bible man? No, I did not talk to the Bible man mm -hmm. himself, but I talked to the Bible man's people. And Bible man's got people? Yeah, I guess so. All right. Uh, the Testament. people who, the, mm -hmm. the tour director people who mm -hmm. got him running all over the country, they were excited. And then uh, they stopped returning my phone calls after a couple of days. So I haven't heard anything from them since. Hmm. Hmm. 
Was Woodrow already in his in man? Yes. Okay. So, evidently, we're not going to get Bible Man. Because it was supposed to be, he's in town. Is it, is today. it 12? Yeah, yeah today. Wasn't that it? Mm-hmm. Mm hmm No phone call to say, we're just not coming, we're not interested, no. we don't have time. No. They they got in town last night and did their setup last night to do their show today. and Nothing after that. Mm hmm Damn. Because that had have been better than celebrity he was, boxing. The one Woodrow jump all over his ass. Yeah. He was going to come up in costume and sign autographs and take pictures and do the whole Bible man thing. Mm -hmm. And then we have Woodrow come in as end man. Mm -hmm. Start smacking him in the head. <laughs> I just, God, just a, just a mental image of Woodrow pistol whipping him. <laughs> I got a pretty clear idea of what end man is. But what, what is Bible man? Oh, you weren't here for that. Uh, uh, go ahead, Dan. Willie Ames, who, you know, from Eight is Enough. Oh, yeah. And, Charles uh, in Charge. Charles in Charge. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Is now Bible Man. I see. Bible Man is a series of uh, Christian children's videos. He's a superhero. So his career's going well then. Yeah. And uh, is also a touring show, and they have the real Willie Ames, the real Bible Man, playing Bible Man. And it's a mixture of fights and comedy and... Dance. You weren't here for the whole setup? No. Oh, we were going to have get Bible Man up here in the studio. Yeah. And, you know, just let him do whatever it is he needs to do. And then have Woodrow come in dressed as end man. Woodrow can say the whole word. Right. And he has many times. Yes. With his outfit. Right. Little utility belt with chicken bones and pork skins and orange soda and crap all over it, of course. And then come in and pistol whip Bible Man. <laughs> 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 and this is the real Bible man. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Damn it. No, 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 no. Oh, that was going to be the real end man, too. <laughs> there. That's my dollar. <laughs> yes. No, no one stands in for Bible man, even during the action sequences. He he does all of his own stunts. So it wouldn't be like the whole Blues Clues fiasco oh, that J.D. No, said. No, no, like no this would have been the real Bible man. Thank God. And the website's BibleMan.com. You really got to go look at it. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's quite um, a bright purple costume, cape, lightsaber. It looks like they had the work done at some strip shop. <laughs> yeah. You know? It does. It looks like a, a paint job on a car from the 70s. Well, all he needs is a mural on the side of his head, and he's a good times man. <laughs> Jeez. Whatever. Well, what is it exactly that he does? He fights evil. With his saber and... Yeah, does he, he has a saber, doesn't he? Uh, it's a lightsaber sort of thing, yes. I believe a motorcycle. Uh, he has a little drone mm -hmm. that follows him around and uh, puts a shield around him. Is that uh, the, that's not the black guy, is it? No, the, there's the black guy whose name is... Uh, oh, I forget okay. the character's name. But he's got a little drone that follows him around. It flies. And it... Uh, he calls out commands to it, and it shields him in righteousness and mm -hmm. things like that. The and man has one of those, but they call them bats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. the, the, the Bible man character was a wealthy scientist who, who found God and decided to dedicate his life to fighting evil. I see. You all caught up? Yeah. I, and we were I all excited that he was coming into town. Mm -hmm. Oh, that would be I mean, In fact, did they, they originally called us, didn't they? Yes. Because they didn't know any better. They just right. saw a talk show, CBS, Dallas. Dan returns a phone call. Never says anything about anything else. Just keeps saying CBS Radio Dallas. I stuck to the CBS Radio. And then I called them back, and they hooked me up with the, the actual people to get him in here, the tour director. Somebody ratted us. Mm -hmm. so. Go ahead. You're on the air. Hey, yeah, Russ. Yeah, hey, can I ask a uh, question to the rock and roll attorney there? Sure, go ahead. Hey, uh, attorney, you there? Yes, let's hey, go. Cool. Hey, I just wanted to ask you what it felt like to lose yesterday in Tarrant County. I don't I know. Mean, I... Just to get punked out like that. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't lose anything in Tarrant County, but thanks for calling. Yeah, <laughs> you okay, me buddy. Doesn't matter. I don't know what he's talking about. What do you? Don't hang up. You put. <laughs> he obviously doesn't either. You don't even go to Tarrant County, do you? Yeah, actually, I was in Tarrant County yesterday, mm -hmm. but um, I don't know what he's talking about. I got flowers from the person I represented in Tarrant County. Yesterday. Oh, is this the same chick? Yeah. Oh. 
Yeah, obviously you didn't lose. <laughs> so, I don't know what he's talking about. Hold on. And obviously, if he had a point, he wouldn't have hung up. Yeah, because you got punked out. Oh, yeah. That's why I got flowers. Yeah. Why oh, you punks get flowers. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that's what was going to happen today. Bible man and man. Pistol whipping. It was greatness. <laughs> just, I just, I can't just, I almost want to do a movie just to watch yeah. that happen. Because there's nothing greater than watching a superhero get pistol away. <laughs> Eddie, we need a break again? Yes. Now, you're not tricking my ass this time because I looked up at the clock and it was 3.55 when we came back. So it's only been six minutes. The news went longer than I thought it would. How long is this break going to be? Uh, about four minutes. That's too long. You can have two spots here. You can have a live one and a recorded one and that's it. And the listener thing. What listener thing? That giveaway. Yeah, that's only 10 seconds long. Okay. All right. So it's only a two-minute break. Two-minute, 10 seconds. Right. All right, we'll be back. More of the Russ Martin Show coming right Vive Cuervo for the ultimate margaritas and the smoothest shots called Jose Cuervo. And remember, vive responsibility. Drink responsibly. Slick. <laughs> Now even our bumpers are sponsored. Yeah. All right. <laughs> what were we doing before? You know the sales guys will sponsor the Lover, Lover Boy bumper eventually. That's when everybody listens to Oh, yeah, this this light flashing segment brought, brought to you by, by yeah. old Riley Auto Parts yeah. in case you burn your head. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Grab this. Yeah, well, you just gave it to them. I don't make it. Oh, we give them stuff all the time. They don't yeah. follow through on it. I said uh, uh, get a sponsor uh, for Ludwig. He can come up and do sports. Mm-hmm. We don't he have said to... he'd do it. Yeah. Nobody called him. Nobody followed up. Nobody asked me about it. Nobody sent an email. You hand an idea to him. That's a gimme. I mean, that's an easy one. Yeah. Nobody followed. It's grown. I don't care. What has it been? Hey, Russ. Hey. I need some serious advice. Yeah, okay. I've been going out with this chick for a few weeks now, and, man, I'm ready to close the deal with her, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. But the problem is I'm just not really quite sure how to go about it. Um, you know, with the exception of doing something like a method of a gun butter core form, what I need to do to get this chicken bed, or at least a lot closer to it. <laughs> What'd you say about chloroform? <laughs> I was just joking. I don't want you on Eddie's website anymore. <laughs> but man, what do you think? What What do I need to do? How far have you gotten so far? Do you get cans? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've gotten to second base basically, but no more than that. It's been stopped any more than that. Did you get any of her fishy cat? No, no. Um, she, she stops anything more than that. Nothing at all. How old is this chick? 26. Married before? No, not mm. that I know of. Mm. I mean, she says she likes me and all, but... How, long, how many times have you been out? About probably five on a real date. Mm. What do you talk about when you go out? You talk about her? Chicks eat that crap up. They really do. All oh, you yeah. got to do is just get them on one topic about themselves and just shut up. You mean just let her talk about herself? Absolutely. Find out stuff about her. Or just, you know, make make like mental notes. When you go out, if she says, I don't care how inane it is, just kind of make a mental note. I like uh, orange. Just something stupid like that. Keep that in mind and then start getting her orange crap or turtles or whatever. Yeah, do you Am I making any sense? Yes. Yeah. You really think it'll help? Yes. Doing it like that? I, I, a perfect example of trying to get in a chick's drawers, and it almost paid off. If I had more than just, here comes Bob. What? Dana says Napa just called. They want to sponsor the Love Boy bumper. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? Serious. count. Okay. Told you. Where How was? great is that? Uh, getting in girls' drawers. Oh, oh, uh, uh. Had she been in town for more than a day, yeah. I could have worked that old woman poon. You remember yeah. when Donna Mills was in here? Yeah, you were working that good. First of all, I really don't know anything about Donna Mills. Mm. Dan just got me a list. That when I found it, she was in the lobby and I forgot she was coming, I went, print out anything you've got on her and let me look at it for a couple of minutes and just remember you know, remember what I can. And then you throw it out like you've been really following her career and you're really a fan. Every time I threw something out about her, you saw how she kind of just lit up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I did do that. Yeah. Like, you have been following me. Mm-hmm. 
They didn't get a limo ride just by accident. <laughs> so that's what you do. Well, I've tried to be real nice to her and stuff. Yeah, that doesn't always work. Yeah, she worth this much trouble? You'd five dates and nothing but cans. Yeah. Well, she do anything to you yet? I'm, no. Well, I mean, we've just kind of played around, but nothing, like I said, nothing really serious has happened. Did she, she touch it? No. Yeah. You show it to her? No. No. Yeah. Sometimes I show it to them, and that kind of gives them the idea to touch it. <laughs> yeah, if it's whipped out. Yeah. Or you just take it out, and you move yeah. your hand over there towards it. Mm. If they pull away, then that's not a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to get a chick that you're stronger than. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. What? You not, don't. Not this guy. He's got chloroform. Yeah. No. You just pull it over, and you put their no, hand on it. No, you don't. Why not? Because. A bit, a bit yeah. much. You just said you got to get a chick you're stronger than. Yeah. Like you're forcing her. Well, you just point. grab her hand and you pull it over. And she says no. Well, not even. I'm just saying sometimes they pull away. And you have to be stronger to pull them back. <laughs> it's a game. That's, not That's a all. Game. They they really want to touch no, it. No. Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to convince them a, a couple of times. No means no. Yeah, she's probably used to guys grabbing at her since she works as a waitress. Oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, well. All right, man. Well, I appreciate the help. All I'll right. Try it. Okay. Prime exam I'm telling you, go back and listen to the Donna Mills thing. I didn't know squat about that woman. I just knew she was hot, 80s, and I remembered something about Knott's Landing. I didn't know anything else. I know. He brought up her daughter or her little kid, whatever. Daughter that she adopted in 95. She was on the cover of uh, TV Guide in 89. She was also on the cover of TV Guide in 1971. Damn. Any pets? Uh, no, but she was also in a series, a uh, short-lived series with Larry Hagman in the early 70s. I forget what it was called. Hello, Larry, or something like that. I forget. Oh, that was with Mc McLean Stevenson. Then it wasn't that one. Okay. <laughs> Trying to help out. McLean Stevenson would have been post Mash. This would have been about the time Mash was starting. Okay. But if you don't have a reference sheet like that, you ask them questions. Stop. Well, you just ask them stuff, or you make notes. You just pay attention. It's as big of a pain in the ass it is, as it is. Once you get the poon, you can stop all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> just seriously, once you once they open up, you can forget that nonsense because you're in. Right. And once you do that, then you're already starting to bond, and chemistry takes over, and you're good. Mm -hmm. They can get their own damn oranges. Yeah. <laughs> Did we keep the Donna Mills thing? Yes. During one of... What is on in your studio that makes that noise? Because I don't remember it used to be in that loud. I I don't know. They've added another computer over in over in the corner. Does it need to be on for any reason? Uh, it's the one for the uh, EAS system. So we don't need it on. <laughs> yeah, we do. It, it has to be on. It's an emergency alert. System. I've turned everything in here off. It's not your laptop, is it? Yeah. Turn your mic off. It didn't used to be that loud. Mm -hmm. It's always been loud. Two more weeks. Anyway, you should get the... Uh, actually, it's going to be sooner than that. Okay. Um, get the Donna Mills thing and just go go in and listen to it bit by bit where I throw out one of those compliments and watch her react every time, whether it's a compliment or you're just saying something about them. Mm -hmm. You've always been good at that, though. With, with the female guests that are in studio, you just have a particular style that seems to work really well. I don't know what it is. I just thought it was an ass. <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe that's refreshing. Janie said that before. Mm -hmm. Maybe chicks find, you know, guys being an ass to them, it's different. Because, you know, every, all of them go into interviews, whether it's TV or radio, and it's always, God, I've loved you and so many things, and, and you've done, you're just a beautiful person. I, I And then they let them talk about whatever dopey charity is they're pushing. Mm -hmm. Everybody's Gary Cogill. Yeah. Now your movie. Let's talk about, oh, shut up. I hate to watch him interview. I knew it just because I like the train. I, I want to see how cheesy he's going to get in the interview. So. He wish somebody would reach over, grab him by the hair on his head, and ram their knee right in his mug. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. once. Just once. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You're on the air. Um, yeah, the guy either needs to tell her that he's dying or take her shopping. <sighs> and then he'll close the deal. All right. What'd she say? Either she needs to say that he's dying Oh, dying. Or he needs to take her shopping. Then you have to die. Yeah. I'd rather you just die. Yeah. After he gets it, who cares? She won't know. Oh, the mall. It depends if he wants to. Yeah, I'd rather die at the mall. Yeah. <laughs> the mall. I mean, that, that makes chicks wet. I can't go. I, I don't know what it is. Dan's talked about this before. As soon as I walk into the mall, I could have I could have just gotten up. I could have just taken vitamins, had a couple of Red Bulls, a B12 shot. As soon as I walk into the doors of the mall, my power's drained. <laughs> I immediately have to go in and find some place to sit down because I just can't stand up. You know what it is. 
it's mm. all these people with their wives that are like really fat and they have two or three kids mm -hmm. with them and the guys just look like the walking undead they <laughs> do and you're thinking they oh my do. god but why does it drain the power out of me because it makes you think there but for the grace of god go i you could be that guy i don't you know, even get that far as soon as the doors open i'm drained there was a group that actually did a study on it. It's, it's just a mental thing with men. We want to flee. We want to get away from it. And just the, the pressure of being in there sucks all of your energy away. And I guess chicks dry, thrive on that. Yeah. How so, come it doesn't happen to me when I go to Best Buy? I, when I get it, I could stay in there for hours just trying to decide on something to buy. Because you're hunting. Yeah, that's cool too. Well, why wouldn't I hunt at the mall? Because there's nothing in there you want. 90% of that's dresses and shoes. Oh. Uh -huh. And you see all these guys whose lives are just utterly ruined. That doesn't make for a fun afternoon. My, malls are primarily for women and old people. Old people go into mall walk, and yeah. women go in to shop. They're gathering. Men want to hunt. You yeah, want to go in and you I, want to seek and find things. I saw the caveman thing. Go ahead, you're on air. <laughs> yeah, Russ, I missed all of last week's show. What happened with the lesbian at the ticket? <sighs> Is that still pending? Yes. Okay. Nothing. That's it. You want uh, You know what? We need to take that video of the attack and put it on the website. Oh, that'd be great. Did I bring that up before? Did I say on the air? Yeah. Because yeah. it's not that long. No. Was it maybe like the good parts twenty seconds? Yeah, fifteen twenty. But very telling. Yeah. Yeah, we may do that. All right. Thanks. All right. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hi. Yes. I wanted to tell that guy there's an easier way to get in our pants. Go ahead. Well. The easiest way is to get something, get takeout, and invite her over for dinner, and swear as Jenny. This chick does not sound hot. And tell her to dress very, very casual and comfortable. And they're going to watch movies on the VCR, the DVD. 38. And they think she's older? Good, romantic one. 40. Have lots of candles. Really think 43? Jenny? I want to say, I want to say, fire like a serious smoker. Okay. Sure. Yeah. That'll work. Hmm. And has that worked for you before? Oh, in seconds. Really? Oh, yeah. What else works, uh, uh, uh things like that? What else works with you? Um. Ten bucks? Let's see. Right. Eddie, you want some? Dinner out. How old do you say she is? Uh, a great kiss with the car. Hurry. 41. Okay. Um. Touchy feet under the table. Yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. How long have you been doing that? Huh? How long have you been doing that? Oh, about two months. Yeah. Can I ask how how old you are now? Mm, no, you don't want to. Be yeah, that. I do. How old are you now? Um, I'm over forty. How much over forty? A little bit. Like forty two, forty three. I'm forty six. Are you really? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> you got that one, Everett? Thank you very much. All right. Got that one. Here. All I got is five. Take it. Just put it all on account in the cuss cup. <laughs> yeah, because you'll end up using it. I'll use it the days over. Okay. Eddie, keep your money. Do we need to break again before news? Yes. All right. Go ahead, Her Is it Hermie? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. I just came uh, back from Oklahoma. I have a ranch up there, and somebody gave me a check last week for $350 for a computer. Where are you from? I am from Austria. Austria? Yes. All right. And uh, I would like to know if I can, t if that is enough to turn it in to the district attorney. Are you or... sure you're just not retarded? Am I retarded? Yes. I don't think. I, well, I hope not. Hmm. Sounds like Madeline Kahn in Blazing Saddles. That's why I was trying to think of something to get her to sing. <laughs> I, I I'm tired? Know. Was that the song? Yeah. Mm. I'm tired. Tired of being alone. Yes. <laughs> Say I'm hunting rabbits. I am hunting rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> and I am not hunting rabbits because I have dogs who, run, who hunt rabbits. Mm. Why, are you laughing about my oar? Yes. That's not very nice. I need something else. Like what else does... Uh, she said she lived on something in she, Oklahoma. She li All right. What was your question? Well, I somebody wrote me a check for $350. And I just came back to Dallas because I have a house in Dallas and my ranch up in Oklahoma. And uh, they stopped payment on the check. Of course, I deposited the check when she gave it to me last week. 
and I wrote some bills on it. Of course, uh, I just got the check. I think she's a hair lip. I don't think she's from Austria. And I was that's just a, a good excuse. That she's yeah, that's what, what I would tell people if I was hair lip. I'm from Austria. Does it have to be 500 before you can do anything about it? Or do you have any idea what she says? Yeah. All right. Well, then get because I am mad. Go ahead. Okay. They stopped payment on the check before yes. it went through. Did that happen in here or in Oklahoma? Here, in oh, Dallas. And they wrote the check here in Dallas? Yes. Okay. You may have a little bit more difficulty than if the check had bounced because the payment was stopped on the check. It, it may be construed as a civil matter. In other words, one that you may have to file suit in order to recover. I mean, you can try with the district attorney's office and see what they say, but I suspect that that may be what You think I should happens. just forget about $350 and... Uh... It's probably not worth the effort that you would expend to try and recover it. Well, I don't like this one bit. What's something else I can get her to so say? I guess I have to think Rascally rabbit? No, so we already get right? to the rabbit thing. Yes. How, how did all this happen? Well, all right, we got time to think now. Okay. And uh, she wanted. Or I'm just thinking of and cartoon I phrases. I have it for three hundred and fifty dollars. Hmm. Zoinks. And no, uh, she wrote me a check. And, uh, of course, I went on the phrase. to Oklahoma, and I just came back. That was last Thank you, one, Eddie. And, um, what I else does Elmer Fudd say? You know, it was Ask her if uh, she would like another schnitzen Gruben from Blazing Saddles. No. No? So that's how it happened. Oh, well, that's too bad. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, me too. Mm. So you think I should just leave it and uh, just... What was your advice? I forget. It's it's probably not worth the effort. I mean, you you can contact the district attorney's office if you like, but again, because it was uh, the payment was stopped before yeah. it went through the bank, it's likely going to be construed as a civil matter rather than criminal. So, and the test take my loss. That would probably be your best bet. Okay, mm. short of slashing her tires. Yes, or you could do that. Well, <laughs> I, I can't encourage you to slice her tires. Well, we can. I know, I know because I, she knows. Mm. She knows. You know, she might know my, uh, I really don't know it yes, that well. I don't even really just, care uh, anymore. Yeah, it just was stupid. Say, okay. say this, say this for me. It's true, it's true. It's, it's true, it's true <laughs> that uh, you should, uh, you should just watch what, uh, from whom you take a check. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's what I said. That's okay. <laughs> I like her. Why didn't she just say, somebody stop payment on a check, what do I do? And that Wasn't that the question? I don't know. I was stuck on ranch. <laughs> <laughs> God, you're on the air. Yeah, uh, ask about the uh, red rose. How oh, do you say red rose? Yeah. How ordinary. Red rose. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks. Too late now. All right, well, just have a list. Because you know she's going to call back sooner or later, and that's not going to be our last hair lip. So just have a, a list on standby. We can change it now, now that that's about to be sponsored by Napa Auto Supply. <laughs> I'll bring a lighter just just so I can so you can go fire it up. Yeah. Friday, I'm bringing the fog machine. Are you? Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. It's going to turn into I a huge it. production. I found it last night. Yeah. Who are the two chicks in the lobby? Uh, they are here for their affirmation of lesbianism. You, you said the Is that today? It's today. It's on the board downstairs. I, I know it. I never pay attention. There's nothing ever on that board. Why would I ever look at the last book? The last thing that was on that board was Donna Mills, and that was the only name on there for three months. Why would I look at it? Well, there was something new. It should have been easily to be easily seen. And I reminded you last week that you had to write a ceremony for today. Plus, they're hot. Yes. Are they like extra lesbian? Yeah. Why? So there ain't no way to get in there. They're here. <laughs> You'd have to ask them. They're here for each other. I ain't got no queer ceremony. <laughs> use the one. Do you still have the one you used for the the two guys? 
Mm -hmm. Just inverted. Yeah. That talks about poo stabbing. That don't work with chicks, does it? No. I don't know. Hold on. <laughs> we got to do it now? Well, they're, they're waiting out in the lobby. I mean, how long do you want them to wait? Who knows? While you rewrite the ceremony? Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll go tell them. Yeah, that won't take long. I reminded you. When? Last week. And you couldn't have reminded me day of? Well, it's on a rundown that I sent you. Did you even look at it? It said Wednesday, June 12th on it, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> you didn't look at the rest of it. It never says it. <laughs> it just then has, when it does, it should be even more noticeable. It just has See, all the things like, here's a sponsor for this. J.D. has to read these. Make sure Jonathan does this. Blah, blah, blah. It's all the technical crap that it's going to happen so whether I look words, at it or not. So in other words, you've gotten to the point where you completely and totally ignore all the stuff that I send you. Did I know what it said? You can do that it had a date on it. Thank you. I've only gotten that wrong once or twice, so you could have just guessed that. <laughs> you never opened the... Okay. It's fine. All right, fine. Okay. Maybe next time you'll pay attention. Tell them it'll be a few minutes. <laughs> All right. You ready? Sure. All right. 433, J.D. Ryan's on the new 105.3 FM Talk with News. And trust news about those by Denny's and by Southwestern Bell. For more information, visit them at sbc.com. A U.S. military transport plane with 10 people aboard crashed in eastern Afghanistan today. At least some of the folks have survived. Spokesman said officials got word that there are survivors. How many? They do not know. Seven of those aboard were crew members. Three were passengers. The crash did not appear to have been caused by hostile fire. Outgoing Clinton administration staffers caused $20,000 in property damage when they exited the White House in the days before President Bush's inauguration. That's from the general... This is kind of the perfect ending of a white trash administration. Absolutely. Wasn't it? It sure was. Right, I got the trailer before you leave. Yeah. General Accounting Office came up with their final report. They found uh, missing and damaged property, including 62 keyboards, 26 cell phones, two cameras, 10 antique doorknobs, 5 uh, to 10 presidential medallions, and a number of office signs. All gone. Uh, the nuts at PETA sending a skinny kid dressed as Jesus to the Southern Baptist Convention in St. Louis today so he can proclaim, for Christ's sake, go vegetarian. Jesus will be played by Jeremiah Bird, a Southern Baptist and Harvard Divinity School graduate who believes that the Bible's teaching of nonviolence applies also to animals. I don't think it does. No, not the tasty ones anyway. <laughs> no. No. Because yeah. PETA's not talking about the way animals are killed. They're just talking about animals, animals being killed at all. Right. No, I don't think the Bible covers that. No. I mean, it's, you know, it's nice to be nice to animals. Hmm. Just because you eat it doesn't mean you got to be an ass to it. <laughs> no. It doesn't. No. no. A little salt. Yeah. You're nice to a chick for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Yeah. Or Except eat it. The chick yeah. lives to see another day, most likely. Sometimes. Research, researchers from the University of Massachusetts, of Massachusetts have found that most people lie. Uh, within 10 minutes of conversation, 60 percent. And by the way, how do you trust the results on a survey when you're interviewing people that say they lie? Well, what they did is they put people in a the room, they videotaped them without their knowledge, right. told them they were doing something else, and got people to talk about themselves and everything else. And then they brought them back out and they said, all right, here's what we're really doing. Watch yourself. And every time, try to be as honest as you can. Every time you see yourself. Do you understand lying. my question? I understand your results. I understand your okay. you give, the people are lying. But again. 60% of them did lie. Told them. 60 percent of them told a whopper. Most of them told two or three. Men and women lied. I can't remember the last time I told the truth. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. I mean, whether it's people here at the station or chicks or business dealings. Mm -hmm. I can't think of a time. Reach out. Mm -hmm. I'm done reflecting. Okay. I was just thinking about a story Joy called the other day. Yeah. He said, what are you doing? I said, I just got home and I checked email and probably... Her out of batch. She goes, yeah. oh, you always ask me to tell the truth. I tell you the truth. And you know what? She goes, that's just rude. Okay. I'm just going to check email. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, learned, I, I screwed up. I told the truth. Like, all right. Women tend to fib. I don't know why you tell her anything. No, it's just. She it, always turns. I don't care what you tell just, her. It's, she turns it on you. It's, whether it's on the air or off the tell air. Tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. So I did. Okay. Anyway, women tend to uh, fib to make people 
feel better about themselves, men tend to lie to make themselves look better. When the volunteers yeah. studied, watched the videotape back, uh, they pointed out their own lies, and they didn't even realize they told some of them. And Janet Jackson is remodeling her new home in Fisher Island, Florida. While she's waiting for everything to be finished up, she's got a little little hotel room on the side. $270 a night for a hotel room in the Waldorf Towers in South Beach. But, of course, she's not staying there. It is for her Ron Weiler, Riley. Hotel room for the dog. Why is everybody staring at me? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't say a word. <laughs> First of all, I wouldn't pay two seventy a night for me to stay in a hotel room, mm-hmm. let alone my dog. Well, you would if you had Janet Jackson money. Yeah, you're right. I wouldn't think about that. You put her, you put Abby up. Yeah, if I had millions and millions of dollars, mm-hmm. yeah, I wouldn't think about dog it. Dog would have her own floor and a nanny. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, don't forget the new 105.3 FM Talk second anniversary party. We'll see you at the Texas Motorplex in Ennis, Saturday, June 22nd, all day, 3 until 10 o'clock in the big parades before, live bands, big toys, lots of drinks. And if you want to win cash in the buddy contest, go to KYNG.com, listen for your name at 4, and again at 6, click on win cash for the details. There's news and information. I'm J.D. Ryan on the talk that rocks Texas, the new 105.3 FM Talk. More of the Russ Martin Show coming right up. You know how songs remind you of crap? Yeah. This song reminds me when I used to sneak over to Joni Mubrin's house and peer, peek through her window and see if I could catch her undressing. So you're peeping Tom now, you're me. I was only 15. Oh, that's still peeping Tom. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever? No. I mean, I, oh, I did a lot. And she lived like, I don't know, nine miles from the house. How'd you get over there? Bicycle. Oh, jeez. She must have really been worth the trouble. Joni Muber? Yeah. Oh, yeah. She was. I saw her in a bikini one time on Senior Skip Day. Mm-hmm. And she had uh, she g- gotten cut in the water by some glass. Yeah. <sighs> Just below her bikini line. Uh, she goes, could you help me with this? So she had to pull down her little bikini bottom a little bit, and I saw her butt. Who? <laughs> You're backing up right now. Let's think about it, aren't you? It's a bottom lip. Uh, it was ever so quiver. slightly. Damn. How many years ago was that? High, that was 1970. It was senior skip day, so it was 79. Mm-hmm. 80. Three or 23 years ago, and you're still quivering over it. I can still see it. <laughs> Little, tight, 17-year-old body. Did you just go? And I, had, I always had a crush on her throughout high school. Her and Mona Reinhardt. Mm-hmm. Kelly Duncan, too. Mm-hmm. Tony Clevenger. <laughs> a bunch of little hot bitches <laughs> wouldn't talk to me. Joni was always kind of nice. They'll probably call in today. And now they're fat. With no, me. actually, I saw Joni at the, the high school reunion. Really? She still looks good. She probably don't look good naked no more because mm. she's had kids. Mm. God, Kelly Duncan had the biggest cans. <laughs> You're just flashing back and seeing uh-huh. your eyes. And Joni's a redhead, so she just had that fair skin. And when she pulled her bikini bottom, oh, oh, God. <laughs> can you help me with it? You boy, she asked everybody to ask. Yeah, it's Russ Martin. I'm going to pull my bikini down now. <laughs> You're safe. Yeah, could you just rub, trust you. rub some little alcohol on this? That doesn't feel like alcohol. That's because it's my bowl. Of course you got, Jonathan. A pervert from birth. Hi, this is Rob Martin, brought to you by Malarge and Automotive and Northern Tool in Fort Worth. Westbound 121, just prior to Carson Road. The right lane is blocked. Into an accident involving an 18 wheeler. Another accident westbound, north loop 20 at Highway 26. That one blocked in the left lane. Hey, let's see, southbound, 935, just under the George Bush Turnpike, left center lane blocked. Then an accident there, and finally eastbound, 635 LBJ, just past 75 Central Left Lane, blocked into a minor accident. Allen caused it a delay back to the tollway. This report brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Today's woman has a lot of responsibilities. That's why you need life insurance. Be a good neighbor. Text the State Farm agent for life insurance for your way of life. State Farm is there for you. State Farm is there for life. That's traffic. I'm Jonathan Dodge in the new 105.3 FM 
Lightning. Thank you, Jonathan. All right, party cloudy, 75 for the low tonight. Then mostly cloudy tomorrow. Some scattered storms coming in Thursday, mostly to the north. Some rain by Friday and cooler, only in the mid-80s by Friday. We have 91 degrees currently at the Talk That Rocks, Texas. The new 105.3 FM Talk. Line one? Yes. Go ahead, Tony. Hey, uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to remind you, uh, Russ, that uh, you told J.D. and Dan that any time they wanted to know the truth about something just to get you drunk. Am I correct? You yeah. did say that at one point. Am so, I right? It depends on what you want. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. I believe you said that if they wanted to know the truth about anything, all they had to do was get you drunk, right? Okay. So say it. Say what? Say it. Eat it. <laughs> <laughs> So you were telling the truth. I was drunk. I was horny when I called her Saturday night. That's. Mm -hmm. But what good does it do you to call her when you're horny on? You know, we, oh. I I just you look at because she's I still find in her little trading cards all over the house and you open a drawer and there one is and then she's naked and you go I should call her. Mm -hmm. You were at two o'clock in the or one o'clock in the morning your time. I would admit I miss the body. I don't miss the everything that goes along with it. That's mm -hmm. why you said I love you. I didn't say that. Yes, you did. Not all at once. Yes, you did. <laughs> yes. All of it. <laughs> and then made her say it back. I love you. Say it. No, say I, just, I seriously don't recall that. That's what she said. She does. So, did saying. you stay awake until 2 in, the, 2 in the morning thinking about L.A., or did you wake up in the middle of the night thinking about her? And just I was at home with Bob in my house. He was drunk. You heard the Bob story, didn't you? No. You miss all the good stuff. I do. <laughs> Oh, oh, Bob and I went out. I'll give you the condensed version. Bob and I went out Saturday. Right. Topless bar. Okay. He's mixing his alcohol. Bad. Okay. <clears throat> On the way back, he tells me to pull over the car. Really? Right. Now he's the big yak mice. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you? Tollway. Had to pull off at, uh, like, near Mockingbird. I don't think there's, yeah, there's an exit there. Mm -hmm. And he's, yeah, first he yaks out the window. Then I finally get the, I still have part of the audio. It's lovely. This oh, is so painful. What's He's it? the loudest. What's it stored under, Eddie? Bob Yak. Bob Yak? Bob Yak. <laughs> I have the little uh, Sony uh, Panasonic digital uh, little handheld recorder that I keep in the car. Do that again. You ever see giraffes when they're mating? They do that horrible scream. Yeah, that's it. In person, that's really loud. <laughs> he has one finger in each ear, and he's holding out the recorder. Yeah. <laughs> I actually look like this. Just <laughs> not to have to hear it. And I still heard it. But more importantly, you got it on tape. Oh, yeah. I get up the next day and I go look at the car, and it looks like I had uh, uh, went to the body shop and had them spray paint and vomit on the side of the car. <laughs> Vomit flames. That's a textured effect. <laughs> yeah. I like stucco. Sort of. <laughs> so anyway, Bob's passed out on my couch. Now I'm drinking because I had to stop drinking early because I knew one of us was going to drive home, and he already showed it by my house. He wasn't drunk, but, but he was on his way. Right. Where was I going with this? Uh, you were oh, so now I'm drinking, and I called L.A. I didn't have anything else to do. Of course not. Video you could game. have just gone to bed or surf the internet, yeah. play video games. All right, I'm, I got it. Nobody else has ever called anybody. Somebody they didn't really want, they just called them when they were drunk. Everyone has. Yeah. That's why it's funny. But never said, I love you. Say it back. Come on, say it. Pretty, say pretty, it baby. Come on, puppy. Come on. Nobody's, I haven't done that. And then you're going to spend your whole vacation with her? No, yeah. she's not coming. Yes, she is. You invited her. I, I, I don't know, actually, that I've invited her. Yes. I, you know what? I really, I wish to God, I swear to Jesus right now, this was a radio bit, but I really got to get out of this, and you guys are pissing me off. Sorry. You did it to yourself. I, I know it, but I don't need, I just need, I need out of this. <laughs> and I can't say, well, I'm going to go to, like, Vegas for the week, because then she'll meet me there. And if I stay, I gotta. If I say I gotta stay home and show the house because it's for sale, she's gonna come down here. She wanted me to go to Boston. Wow, this is really getting serious. You guys are traveling across the country for each other. I'm not going anywhere. She's coming here. Yeah, you don't I like her. She's okay to hang out with. She's great to bang. 
and you're spending your entire vacation with her because you love it's her. It's funny to sleep with her when she throws out that F my, in my uh, was it nasty? F my nasty C. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she comes up with some good stuff in bed. Yeah. She was just so serious because she was just sitting on top like this. I got to turn the mics off, screw you in the car. <laughs> she, she's sitting on top like this going, uh, 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 and then she goes, oh. <laughs> right out of the movies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I looked up and I started laughing. She got pissed, Jack. Because she's going, well, I'm into it there. That's her favorite movie line. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can see why you would fall in love with her. <laughs> That's just not a word that most chicks use and to throw nasty in yeah. front of it. That just made it funny. Yeah. I think you'll be very happy together. She's not coming and I'm not going up there. I, without being ugly, I may just call and go, look. <clears throat> this is not, no, nah, I got the flu. <laughs> no, just say this is not, this ain't happening. We'll call her now. I don't want to. I got her number. Might as well get it out of the way. She's not going to believe it. I don't want to mess with it. We talked about it yesterday. I don't want to talk about it anymore. No, she I talked. Did. You fumbled around. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? On the phone. Oh, hey, Russ, are you afraid if she nuts out, she'll come after you and hurt you? No. I just don't want to hurt her feelings. I think she'll hurt you. I don't think so. All right. She could. We were wrestling in bed like one of the last nights she was here. It took all I could to get her off of me. Yeah. she got strong legs. She's not going to hurt you. She loves you. I'm not worried about that. Mm -hmm. And you love her. Mm -hmm. Shut up. <laughs> I see you waving the log, Eddie. I'm not falling for your tricks anymore. <laughs> we just came back from a break. It's 4.42 we came back. Well, how about we talk for more than 10 minutes for a change? Screw the log. Go ahead, you're on here. Hey, Russ. Yeah. 50 bucks that you call her, and I'll donate to Operation Kindness. I don't trust you. I don't know you. I don't I'll, trust I'll, you. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the information to, to Eddie over the phone. Hey, that's a great her. idea. You call her right now. It ain't worth 50 bucks. What's it worth? I don't know. A hundred? 50 bucks. Dang, Edward. $100 bill. $100 bill. $100. Hold on. You going to put in $100? Yeah. To Operation Kindness? Yeah. JD, don't start pulling cash out because this is a real bet. Okay. We're paying on this one. I only got 20 Okay, what's the bet? I'll put in 20 I, I don't know. That you call right now and cancel the vacation. So. Right. Right now. If I do that, I get the cash for the shelter. Here's the cash. $100. And it's got to be for real, and you can't go back on it, and she has to be convinced. It can't be one of these ha-ha-ha, you're not coming kind of deals. No hose jobs. All right. You have to be down and dirty. And okay. Right I'm not going to be ugly about it. Yeah, you got to be ugly. No, I'm, there's no reason to be ugly. I just know this is not going to work. $100. It's not okay. worth $100 to hurt her feelings. Plus, I may want to bang her in the future. Okay, you got a good point. $100, call her right now. 120 Dan, you're in or out. This is like a telethon. Donations are flying in. Now, these people on the phone, <laughs> the people on the phone, they're not going to donate anything. It's just to hear this happen on the air, and that's it. We're not going to get an F and dime. All right, here's what I'll do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go to the web, go to my website, make a donation to the, the uh, whatever the thing is that I got. Russ Martin Show Listener Foundation. Yeah, you can do it with a credit card or even a check. Mm -hmm. Go do that, and if there's... No, no, no. Five hundred dollars. Because I'll get an email in the morning. I get emails each morning every time donations come in. Right. So I'll know tomorrow morning there were donations, and then I'll call tomorrow. No. Why? Now the bet is right now. You call right now. None I'm of this call to tomorrow. I'll send the website this and look over there and get an email. <laughs> <laughs> look, cows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll dwell on it. No, no, no dwelling. Shut up. It's right now. The bet is right well, now. Well, then, then it's off because okay. I got other it's, stuff to do. It's off. You're not going to do it. You, you were challenged. You failed to Okay, all right, absolutely. Thank you. Congratulations. You showed me up. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just know where your heart stands now. I will call her. Right now. 
Your words say one thing, but your actions say something completely different. But your eyes talk different. <laughs> and I don't want to even want to say what your mouth's doing. Yeah. Fifty. But, I see. I just Dan's got them lined up on the computer screen already. Fifty dollars from. But yeah, screw you. All right, we need a break here. Yes. All right, we'll break. We'll come back. What do you? What? In the lobby. Oh, the lesbians? Yes. All right. Can't forget about the wedding or whatever. Can we do the wedding really quick, Eddie? Yes. Okay. Go ahead and bring uh, somebody. Bring them in. We'll do the wedding because it's not going to take that long. I just rewrote the ceremony when I did the gay guys. Okay. It's pretty much the same thing. Everett, I'm going to put the the okay. di- I mean, the chicks right here. Put it in. It's Michelle and Angela. Michelle and Angela. Okay. I. Uh, Shell. Hi, sweeties. How you doing? Angela. Hi. Okay. Get up on this mic right here. How long got how long have you two been dating? Um sixteen months. Really? Yes. Mm. How long did you date before um you had the sex? <laughs> oh, the what? Sex. Before you bump oh, clams. One week. <laughs> one week, yeah. Really? How many dates was that? Uh, uh, one one. You little slut. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take your picture. Oh, that's a nice what is a tattoo? I can't see without my glasses. It's a rose, and it has, like, some tribal around it. Yes, what does that mean? Is that, like, a les- lesbian symbol? Mm-mm. Mm. It's just a thing I did. <laughs> Do you have any tattoos? Are you are you both, like, full bona fide lesbians, no mm. guys or nothing? No. no guys. You ever try guys? No. I, I almost got married. To a guy? Yeah. What happened? Um, I'm a lesbian. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> It was. It was. <laughs> she, threw me, she threw me off. I suddenly realized you had a penis. Yeah. No, I was with him for like six and a half years, and then. Well, at what point in the relationship did you decide you was going clam digging? <laughs> <laughs> um, month before I was supposed to get married. Okay, so well, I mean, what happened in the course of the something happened where you went, you know what? I don't. I'd re- I'd be happier with a, a female. Well, what happened was, I was. I was with him, like, from, like, 15 until I was 21. Did you have any lesbian fantasies when you was uh, you were a teenager? Yeah. 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 Did you do it when you were a teenager? No. Oh. No. No, I went to a lesbian bar when I was, like, 19. Yeah. Was that I wasn't nice? supposed to be in there. But... Yeah, that's nasty. You're a nasty <laughs> lesbian. Thank you. You got something on your teeth? Let me see. Mm-mm. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Fur? <laughs> All right. You guys ready to go? Mm-hmm. How long have you been? Uh, would you say two years? Uh, almost. Almost. Yeah. Do you have a ring or anything? Uh, yes, actually, we have both rings. Let me and see. And I have my. Now, how does this work when you're uh, lesbians? Who pays for what? Well, I pay for everything. She pays for everything. I'm. I'm, I'm the I guess you're the man. Call me. No. Oh. <laughs> no, I, I, I didn't say that to piss you off, but somebody's got to be the. <laughs> You've offended the lesbian now. Yeah. No. Um, You're the man in the relationship. You pay for everything. Pretty much. Yeah. You're the dominant. Uh, yes. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Even though it doesn't look that way. Now, when you guys are having sex, do you uh, do you swap off the strap on? <laughs> yes. Do you really? Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't know if like the the guy in the. I didn't know if the guy in the relationship always wore the uh, the strap on. What do you guys? What? It's lipstick. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> They're letting yeah. that Or do you have uh, two strap ons? Uh, just one. Just one. Or two. Yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, you can use one with several different um, attachments. Oh, different things you hook up to it. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> you guys just ever do the scissor thing together? Um. That doesn't work out so well. Does it really not? It looks good in the videos. Yeah. You know, when they're going like this and they're just rubbing uh, oh, yeah. squirrel flaps. Oh, yeah. A lot of stuff flaps. looks good in the videos, but do yeah. you actually think that feels good? I don't know. Yeah. Nor do I care. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are you ladies ready? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Are you nervous? No. Okay. Very. She is. All right. And here we go. gathered here today to witness the union of Michelle and Angela. To fall is to stumble. Do not fall in love. To rise in love is to grow. So rise in love, lesbian bitches. (laughs) The more you rise, the closer you grow. 
until you are truly one in heart and soul and fishy cat. <laughs> Just had to work that in somewhere, didn't yeah. you? <laughs> Do not let the stinky lips in your path send you in different directions. Hold your partner's fishy cat firmly. Remember that together, you can move those obstacles if they are strapped on firmly enough. <laughs> be true, be honest, and be loyal to one another. Remember that love is not selfish, but giving. So give yourselves, lesbian bitches. <laughs> to each other freely and sweetly and fishily. Michelle, repeat after me. I, Michelle, take Angela. I, Michelle, take Angela. To be my partner for life. To be my partner for life. To love. To love. To honor. To honor. To be faithful through good times and bad. To be faithful through good times and bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In fresh and fishy cat. <laughs> I can't say that. For as long as we both shall live. For as long as we both shall live. All right, Angela, repeat after me. By the way, you put the rings on as you're doing this. It's not a special ring part here. All right, Angela, repeat after me. I, Angela, take you, Michelle. I, Angela, take you, Michelle. To be my partner for life. To be my partner for life. To love. To love. Honor. Honor. Be faithful to. Be faithful to. Through good times and bad. Good Through good times and bad. In sickness and in health. Sickness, sick, <laughs> sickness and in health. Close enough. <clears throat> uh, for as long as we both shall live. For as long as we both shall live. Yes, very nice. Under the authority vested me by the Universal Life Church in Modesto, California, I now pr pronounce you life mates. You may now grasp your lover's breast and jab, jab, <laughs> jam your ever so lovely tongue into her pie hole. <laughs> That's not what I meant. <laughs> J.D. Ryan is here, Ever Newton, the rock and roll attorney. Eddie Boyd, producer Dan Lewis, Jonathan Dodge is in the thing. What were we doing before we did the lesbians? I don't know, it's been so long. Mm. It's too bad they were bona fide. Yeah. Well, I like got in the chick that, uh, this one that was standing right here, she was the, the dominant one? Correct. I wanted the other one. Mm -hmm. I like how the other one's eyes lit up. Yes, the dominant one. Mm -hmm. Are you the, the are you the dominant one? The other one said yes. Yes. She got all excited. Mm. What is this CD, Eddie? Oh, this is the Donna Mills. Oh, okay. Let me play this. Listen, every time she gets a compliment, she just lights up. Whether it's a compliment or you just say you know something about her. Is that what you pulled off on this? Yes. All right. Does the CD come up on? Where do you stay? <laughs> I live there. Oh. Hey, did you run a background check on her like I asked? <laughs> did you get a traffic check? I don't think this one got her wet by running a background check. I think there's something on there. Oh, all right. Ticket 95? Oh, God, yeah. Okay, that's all we, that's all we could find. <laughs> what were you doing? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Wasn't that right? Yes. Yeah. But you see how giggly she yeah. is? Oh, yeah. Oh, he knows about me. He cares now. Lift that skirt up, yank that depends out of the way, and <laughs> oh, grab that clam. Before it hits the floor. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's probably not been worn out too much. You know, she has a kid. That seriously, that that's the first chick that I've met that's like ugh, over fifty. Yeah. Ugh, ugh. Yeah, I know. That you'd actually. Yeah. Now, granted, the biggest part of it is that it's Donna Mills. Right. Right. I still think if I just met her at the mall or something like that, I would figure, ah, she's probably in her mid forties. I popped that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's very, still very attractive. Very trim little body. And you, you can look at her picture on the the website, on my website. Mm -hmm. 
She looks better than I do. And she's almost 20 years older than me. Of course, she's wearing makeup. She's a hot bitch. But if you discount that. <laughs> we always like to check our guests out before they come in the studio. Hey, I'm a very important person. We just can't let anybody in here. No, I don't think you have to either. worry about her, Rob. No, no, no. You never know when these chicks are going to nut out. She could come in here and I could. she could think I was Dak Rambo and try and shoot me. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Good Lord. What? I realize how cheesy this show sounds when until you play it back. It's not cheesy. Yeah, it does. It sounds a little morning zoo-ish. Yeah. No, it's we're all laughing. That was funny. It's her fake laugh. No, I forgot to work out, doing any other stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ballet bar, stuff like that. Didn't you do ballet as a teenager? I was a, I was a dancer, yeah. See? Mm. Yeah. He knows a lot about mm. me. I've had the hots for you for a long time. Has <laughs> he been following me? Yeah. Huh? Why yeah. do you think we ran a background check on you? <laughs> that traffic ticket, boy. I... Was it a good one? <laughs> yeah. I was speeding with... Just that little giggly voice. A giggly girl. That's the way... That works on chicks of all... Obviously of all ages. Right. Will you will you come to the event tonight like that? I'll we, do the other eye. If we don't do. get off till seven. <laughs> you fell likely story. We don't. Oh, no. three to seven. Oh well, we're there till seven thirty. Really? Mm hmm. Going out of her way. She's hitting on you to get me out to the event. Mm hmm. Work. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll come. <laughs> okay. You, you can yeah. meet after for maybe a drink. No, she's going back to the airport. Oh, well, yeah, no, no, no. they got a bar at the airport. That's right. Do you need ride a, with us to the airport. Do you need a ride to the airport? <laughs> we have a limo. Do you? Hey, this is big time, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's yeah. pretty big. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That'd have been a better clip with a punchline at the end of it. <laughs> How many cuts are on here? I think 11. Oh. Well, you kind of get, you get the idea, yeah. though. Every time you just throw anything out, they just start getting wet. Never met this lady before in my life. I'm probably not anybody even close to somebody she would go out with or normally date. And you think in Hollywood, she's seen every line, every slick guy. Yeah. Every approach. Except abuse. Or a background check. Yeah. <laughs> do you have your own line of eye makeup? I do. I do. It's mm. called uh, the Donna Mills Collection. The eyes have it. Oh, that's right. You had a video that came out in the 80s, I think. One of my girlfriends got it. Oh, I thought, okay. Mm. I was wondering how you knew about it. No, that was a big thing. Yeah. His knots landing. Da, da, da. She goes, I got to get that. I want eyes just like that. <laughs> oh, well, you can get the eyes. Your ass is still going to be big. <laughs> <laughs> now, who's on the phone, Dan? I can't tell you. Uh, you're mouthing. Just say it. All right, Harold. He's laughing his butt off. What is it, Harold? Hello, Mr. Martin. I just wanted to let you know that uh, if you're wondering why Mr. Bobbleman didn't come up to your show today, that was because of me. No. Did you rat us out, Harold? I went ahead and contacted the uh, the church that he was making the uh, the appearance at, mm -hmm. and I uh, let them know what was going on. Going on, they put me in touch with his uh, with the people who were working the tour for him, and I let him know just kind of just what exactly what your show was all about, what you were going to do to this man when he got on the air. What did you tell him? I told him that you were going to have uh, the um, in man show the what? up there. The who? The, and I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to say that word on the air, Mister Martin. You know exactly what I'm talking about. I, I don't think I'm aware of what you. Well, I'm not. I, I, I knew that you were going to get him on the show, yes. and basically, you were going to humiliate him, ridicule him, uh, a, a fellow warrior in Christ like that. And I wasn't going to let that happen. I just want to let you know that I'm the one that. But you uh, got to admit, Harold, that is funny to think of him getting pistol whipped. No, Mr. Martin, it's not funny you're at not all. Anybody who's taking, the, who's taking the word of God seriously, who's trying to spread the word and to uh, to bring about uh, spreading it to the young kids so that the, gen the new generation grows up strong in Christ, mm -hmm. unlike what you're trying to do with your radio station. What am I trying to do, Harold? You're, we don't, do we have to go through this again? Yes, I'd like you, to. You simply spew forth a blasphemy. Mm -hmm. You uh, are, are treated with irreverent, irreverence. Mm -hmm. uh, the things that are that are supposed to be taken seriously for family values mm -hmm. and, and uh, wholesome morality, cleanliness. Mm -hmm. You sit there and you tear it down. Mm -hmm. You make fun of it. You ridicule it. You, you do everything you can to do the opposite of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, to, 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 a perfect example today is, is, is the marriage ceremony she did between the two lesbians. That's, that's absolutely against what the Word of God is all about. What about it? It's against what the Word of God is all about. Why? The same-sex marriage is, is not condoned by uh, by any of the, the religions that take, uh, take God seriously in this mm. world. But, Harold, it's an affirmation of love. They love each other. 
Uh, uh, why is it? Why Lewis, is it? You Lewis, it, it doesn't matter Mr. what Lewis, they feel yes. for one another. I mean, you, you can have you can have people who who are in sin who care for one another, but that mm. doesn't condone the sin. That doesn't make the sin right. It is not God. God so do you, do you hate do you, homosexuality? Do you hate that, the lesbians? Excuse me. Do you hate the lesbians? I, I don't hate anybody, Mr. Martin. Yes, I believe you said condone. you hated me. I'm not going to condone. Yeah, you, have you said you hated me before, Harold? I am not going to condone I the think fact he has. that, that oh, fact no, people are, yes. are, are, are blaspheming against God. People are doing things that God has told us not to do. Did we sound blasphemy. And the fact that you sit no, there and you no. enable them to do that, <laughs> I'm not going to condone that at all. Sorry, Harold. Miss, I just, Miss, Mr. Martin, and you can go ahead, and I, I just want to let you, I won this one. I won this one, Mr. Martin. You can go ahead and laugh all you want, mm -hmm. but it was because of me that Bible man, uh, Mr. Willie Ames, is not mm -hmm. going to be showing up on your show today as Bible man so that you can sit there and treat him the way that you, that you would. That's okay, Harold. We'll get somebody else. And you know what? I think you've really missed an opportunity to reach the masses. I mean, really. What better place to go to reach sinners than this show? Yeah, we were going to let him talk about all this stuff and give his website. Oh, I, I know exactly what you were going to be doing. You're going to let him talk about it so that you could sit there and make fun of him, that you could have mm -hmm. somebody else come on and, and humiliate and ridicule him yeah. and fight him. That, 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 that he's a fellow warrior in Christ. And we would have let him win. Sit there and let you do that. Yes. Well, I just think if he could have reached just one listener, it would have been worthwhile. But you've... Isn't it worth... Yeah, isn't it worth one person, Harold? Uh, Mr. Martin, I don't believe anybody that, that would have taken anything away from his... Uh, from, from his appearance on, on your show, anything mm -hmm. good anyway from your from your uh, mm -hmm. his appearance on your show yes. would have been listening to your show anyway. Mm -hmm. I know the kind of people that listen to your show. And what kind of people is that, Harold? The kind of people who who, who revel in, in in blaspheming, people mm -hmm. who revel in sin, people who revel in in uh, in in, in not, an unmoral, amoral act. Isn't that he who needs to be saved then? Absolutely, it is, okay. Okay. It is Mr. Uh, Mr. Ryan. But it, it doesn't it doesn't mean. <laughs> Those people aren't going to be listening to, the, to that sort of word. If they're listening to the Carol, show, I know it's they're not fish listening. in a barrel. <laughs> really, they're not it's, listening it's, for good, uplifting messages, Mr. Martin. Well, sometimes you have to sneak in. Hold on a second there, uh, Mr. Harold. Uh, yeah, uh, what is it, Eddie? Hey. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm Catholic, and yes. my faith is strong enough that no matter what you say, it cannot be strayed by anything. I mean... See, Harold, we ain't straying nobody. Uh, would you say his name was Eddie? Yes. Eddie, the very fact that you sit there and listen to this show for entertainment shows what kind of person you are. I mean, yes, you sit there and you want to say that you, that you believe in, that you believe in Christ and that you love God. I say that. Yes. I, you listen to the show for entertainment. Uh, obviously, you're, you're not. Obviously, you don't. Obviously not. Yeah. Obviously. Okay, well, then obviously you're an idiot. Uh-huh. <laughs> now what, Harold? You got you got idiot all he wants. All I know is I won this. You know why? You know why I called you an idiot? Why did he? Because he's. Because that's what you he are. Because he that's what you. Are. That's what you are. He doesn't truly well, believe in what he Harold. says. He does. My mother is also. He doesn't truly believe in he God. He doesn't truly really uh, love Christ. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she still listens to us. What was that? Hey, you know what? Let me ask you this, Harold. You listen all the time, right? No, I monitor your show. Yeah, okay, but you actually hear things that go on on this show, right? Yeah, I've actually. Okay, heard. and have we changed your thoughts at all on your religion? No, absolutely. Okay, well then obviously we can't affect anybody else. If your if your faith is strong enough, then we can't affect it. The difference is, is I don't listen to your show as something that's up. I, when I listen, when I hear your show and I hear the things on there, to me it's not something that's uplifting. It's not you would have laughed if Bible Man had got his ass beat. Yeah, you would. If End Man had come in here and pistol whipped him and taken his wallet, you would have laughed at that. No, I wouldn't have at all. Yes, you would. You can't. How could you not? How could I not? Because it's it, because it's it's degrading. It's yes. immoral. Uh -huh. It's definitely something that. That's what makes it funny. Yeah. No, yeah, if it's, it doesn't if make nice it funny or entertaining at all. Yeah, it does. Not to somebody who truly loves God. Well, that's okay. We'll find another Bible man. Oh, and and soon as you soon as you do, you mm -hmm. can be, you can be sure, rest assured that I'll be. Well, there. then you know what? Here's what we're going to do, Harold. Next time, we're not going to say it on the air ahead of time, and you get no heads up. How about that? What then are you going to do be, now? I'll, what are you going to do now? I'll There's nothing right you can there. do now. Then I'll Shut right, up! Then I'll, I'll, I'll get right you. I'll get your little ass at the tetherball court. That he needs to battle against you. I'm a warrior in Christ, just like Bible man. What? <laughs> to get him at the other ball court? I will. Oh, I'll wrap that rope around his neck. <laughs> I have to. You just laughed. Didn't you laugh? No, I didn't laugh yes, at all. You yes, did. yes, you did. Sorry, I did not laugh at all. I, I, I won. I won. Well, I congratulate you then. It's nothing but a small battle in the overall war. And, and believe I, me, I, with evil, will win. evil will triumph. With God will I will win. triumph. Your, your, your blasphemy is not going to be remain. It's not going to remain on the air forever. We'll see. You will come and you will go and yes. you will fall. Your ratings will go away, mm -hmm. Mr. Martin. Yes. And God and I will be here to laugh. Okay. Well, we'll see. 
Good day, Mr. Martin. Yes. You dry cup of. <laughs> Hold on, let me check my list. <laughs> A dry cup of sun ripened dog spit. Thank you. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> that was worth the wait. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Bob? Yes, uh, I always wanted to talk to him so bad. Uh, wh- uh, why? Uh, nothing, you know what? There's nothing you can do with anybody like that. It's a waste of time. The only reason he gets on the air is because it's funny to me. And I swear, as I'm talking to him sometimes, I can hear him laugh. I, I, I don't see how people can waste so much of their personal life and time on BS like this. I mean, you know, following his little following. and mm. I mean, as I told Dan, he, he reminds me of Frank Burns from MASH. I mean, just a little ferret face. Dan Hotline's ring. And I'd just like to kick the S out of him myself. Yeah. Yeah, the irony is... Harold has done more to promote the cult than he has to to bring it down. Because when he gets on the air and says negative things about you, Russ, mm. all the listeners go, "Russ is great. We love Russ." And cu- the phone lines light up. So he's doing nothing but helping. Well, this, this, I mean, this cult. is a no, no, nothing towards Russ. But I mean, it's just I don't see how people can waste their personal time on this crap. Because he likes being pissed off. I've explained it a hundred different times. These people in life love being pissed off, and that's sure. what they do. Or, or what I'm trying to say is I don't see how... I don't care. Is that Brumley on the hotline? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's uh, Al Brumley. Does he re- I know what he wants. Does he want to talk about this? I think so. I just asked him. All right. Because I know about it, but I didn't know if he was going to let the public in on it. Al, you really want people to know this? Well, it's going to be out on Sunday anyway. Are you going to write about this? Yeah. And, you know, I've, I've got a, you know, I've always had sort of a special relationship with your show, you might say. And mm-hmm. uh, I was going to call in earlier, but I fell asleep. So I apologize for that. That's all right. Well, we found out from Al on, what day was it that you called? Was it Monday? Monday. Yeah. Monday that uh, Al's tumor came back. The tumor's back. Yes, sir. So I'm going in for surgery tomorrow at 1 at Baylor. Are they going to t- uh, try and take this thing out again? They're going to try and yank it out. It, it, how is this one in, in uh, reference to the uh, the other one? Bigger, well, smaller? Well, said it looks like it might be just a little bigger, but uh, not much. The other one wasn't, you know, huge or anything. It's not like I got a golf ball in my head or anything. So, um well, a good thing the size of your head, they don't have to keep going in from the same angle. <laughs> well, that's the thing, yeah. they got lots of room. It's kind of like, you know, going into a 55 Chevy. you got plenty of room to work. Yeah, door trunk. Right. Yeah. So, I didn't want to, you know, not to bring the show all down or anything. No, that's all right. Why would uh, you and your tumor bring the show down? Well, is there a prognosis here? Have the doctors told you anything? Well, um, it's not going to kill me or anything. It, it might cause some tr- trouble with my, my uh, mobility in my arm and leg. Like permanently or re- well, rehabable? Last time, you know, the last time my arm was paralyzed for about a day and then it started moving again. And uh, But it didn't do anything else. Uh, you- he said because it's gotten a little deeper this time, it might do something to my leg. So maybe my leg might be a little weak this time, too. So. Mm. What, uh, well, I don't think it'll be permanent. It'll it'll come back. I might have to do a little rehab, you know. Oh. So your prognosis is good. Yeah, like I said, it's not going to kill me or nothing. It's just going to be a pain in the butt. So I can't keep your keyboard. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've been meaning to talk to you about that. <laughs> is your, is his keyboard still? Yeah, it's still in my it. house. Oh. Nah, just don't worry about it. Just hang on to it and, you know, play that song. How, l- how long are you going to be, uh, uh, you going tomorrow? I'm guessing something like this when they open your head up is not day surgery. No, no, it ain't like running down to the clinic. What, uh, what, uh, how long are you going to be in? Well, the last time I went in on Tuesday, and actually it wasn't that long. I came home on Friday, so I may be home Sunday or Monday, I don't know. So we could come out tomorrow night? Uh, well, I don't know about tomorrow night. Okay, uh, good. Like the first day they kept me in the intensive care yeah. uh, post-op for about a day. But yeah, because we want to show up while you're still out and take some Polaroids. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, well, they might let you do that. Talk to Laura. Uh, what, uh, what hospital are you going to? Baylor. And your surgery's for when? All the way down to Waco. Uh, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow at 1. I'm sorry, I'm trying to do my own show. Oh, that's okay. I got it. All right. Well, then we'll be thinking about you tomorrow. Well, I appreciate it. And, you know, by all means, don't stop the jokes or anything. I wouldn't expect you to, but, you know. Okay. It's going to be fine. It's just, 
it, it you know it's annoying because I got to stop the calling for a while, um, and people are gonna think you know I'm an alcoholic and I'm in you know rehab or something. Oh, that's what I would do. What? I'd have to go to rehab. I'd say brain tumor. Oh, everybody feel sorry for you instead of getting lush. Oh, you'd you know? be amazed. The last time this happened, the things that people thought, you know, and one of one person did think I was in alcohol rehab just for no good reason. Just assume that's where I was. Well, but look at you. Maybe they've ridden with you before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, uh, we'll uh, we'll check with your wife tomorrow. All right, then. All right. Y'all take it easy, okay. and I'll be listening to you. All right. All right, bye. Okay. I didn't think he was going to tell anybody. Yeah. Everybody here knew, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. That's got to blow, because the last time he went through this, he got the tumor, they told him he was going to die. Yeah. Doctor came in and went, all right, we think you got like six months to live. Jeez. He saw another doctor a week later. They went... Yeah, that was upside down. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't as stupid as that, but they they said that guy was wrong. Obviously, yeah. he was wrong. That's where he would come back in exactly the same place. Maybe they didn't get all of it. I mean, why else would it come back in the same place? I yeah. Mean, there some of it left. Mm. All right. Shame they have to go back for seconds, though. <laughs> He's right, though, about having plenty of room. Mm -hmm. It's like working on a, you know, the oil filter on a 77 F-150 pickup. You open up the hood, and you got room all over the place. Crawling in there. Yeah, his brain's probably like a third of the size of his head. <laughs> <laughs> you can actually get to everything. Here's the alternator. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll take a break. We'll be back. Tether and fall, we're going to tether and fall. The mother sucker, tether and fall. How we Website is DallasAttorney.com. Producer Dan Lewis, J.D. Ryan, Eddie Boyd, Jonathan Dodge did White Lightning. We're due for news, aren't we? Yep. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, grab these and we'll do news. Yes, Ed? Yeah, I got a question for uh, Newton. Go ahead. Uh, Newton I had a, Pardon me? Newton here. Shut up, Everett. You're throwing him off. I had, a, I had a lady hit me, and I'm dealing with their insurance right now, and they're telling me that they have to verify that she's had a driver's license for the last three years anywhere in the country. And if she didn't, they're going to deny the claim and cancel the insurance after the wreck. Is that something they can do? And they said that she's been covered right along and they're, they've accepted premiums and so forth? Yeah, I guess. I assume they have. I mean, she had valid insurance. and Have they accepted they, liability on the case? Uh, no. Was it a rear-end collision? What happened? Uh, she, I was in a, she was in a left turn lane only. I was in a center lane that was a, a turn or go straight. I turned and she went straight and hit me in the, in the back rear. Okay. Er, in the side rear. It sounds like they very well may be trying to jerk you around. Do you have any bodily injury? No. What? I'm sorry. Did you have any bodily injury? <laughs> uh, maybe. Yeah. You know. How long ago did the accident happen? Uh, it was almost four weeks ago. Oh. Okay. That could still stand, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. That's weeks. Yeah. Quit. Yeah. Tru truly, you should consult with an attorney because it sounds as though uh, they're trying to uh, jerk you around. Okay. Well, this is the second time I've had to deal with this underwriter in the last two months. This is the third time I've been hit in the last two months. What are you doing? I'm uh, sitting in traffic. And chicks are just gravitated to you. Is it uh, all? I guess. Yeah, as a matter of fact, all three times it's been a woman that hit me. Maybe you can I'm get with Bremley. You guys can alternate between car wrecks and tumors. Yeah. <laughs> uh, What's, uh, no, who I'm was it you were doing spots for? I forget. Lawn car. Yeah. Should he call a lawn car? Yeah, call Brian Lawn Car. All right. Call, call, the lawn, lawn car. call the lawn car. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Thanks. Get in there, way. Yes, Ronnie? Yeah, Russ, you was talking yesterday about uh, how you wanted to date normal chicks. Did I say that? Yeah, you talk about it all the time. Oh, all right. Yeah. Yes, Ronnie. Uh, just somebody, no, I mean, when you put Brumley's wife on your list. Uh, Brumley's wife? Or not Brumley, I'm Dan. sorry, uh, Bob. Dan's wife. 
The one yeah, that's too old. Dan. Forget yeah. it, Ronnie. <laughs> What's the question? Well, uh... Think about it. Call me back later. <laughs> What is, confused. what is it, Jim? Hey, Russ. Yeah. I got a question for Everett. All right. Okay. Yeah, we're at a dealership, and I had an air... I, I almost said the word. I'm sorry. I had a customer that works for one of those packaging companies that, you know, brings you packages. And the deal went bad because he lied on his application, and this guy threatened to physically kill one of my salespeople. Do we have a case against that company? He was in his uniform driving one of their trucks. Well, that's kind of complicated because usually what you're talking about is tort law, and usually if it's something that's committed that is not within the ordinary course and scope of their duty, if it's an intentional act, it's usually not something that you can go against the company against. But there are exceptions to that that are too far reaching to go into here. Your best advice is to contact an attorney. I don't do that stuff, but if you email me, I'll hook you up with somebody that does. Normally, if somebody just threatens to kill you, when you call the police? Well, well we did. Okay, and so yeah, now... the police came, but he left by the time the police came. He, uh... But you have a police report now. And what he said, yeah, and what he said was when this, when my salesman steps outside, he was going to get him. So, you know, basically... Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's a separate issue, obviously, you know, criminal liability. His question was, do we have a case against the company? And Correct, yeah, that that's the, what I was... Yeah. Just because he threatened to kill him? That was his question. No, yeah, I don't that's think my it... question. Because he was in the uniform of the company and he was driving their truck. And actually, he was here during the normal time of pickup. Yeah, oh yeah, I'd say go after whoever it was. I don't care who it was. Airborne, FedEx, I don't Is care. Is this a guy you really want to get fired? What? Oh, he's yeah. Already threatened, he's already yeah. threatened to kill you over not getting a car deal. Well, well it's also some money involved. That, okay. you know, it's distinguishable. <laughs> it's distinguishable from a situation in which, say, he was driving his delivery truck and he rear-ended somebody else on the highway. Then potentially you could go against the employer because that, you know, driving. Well, that's around. a civil matter. This is criminal. He threatened to kill somebody. Well, right. I mean, if I go into Burger King and the employee threatens to kill me, I don't call the police and go, "Hey, lock up Ronald McDonald or Mel McChicken. <laughs> get everybody." <laughs> you get the idea. I get the idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Go get that hamburger. I think, yeah. I think it was the fast food reference that nailed down the definitive answer there. Well, you get the idea. Yeah, Just because yeah. I have on a uniform doesn't mean you go after the company. If I went and killed an entire group of people, I don't go back and sue IBM. Right. Can I? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't. All right. You ready for this? Sure. Okay. 609, J.D. Ryan's on the new 105.3 FM Talk with News. Thanks, Russ. An attorney for an American-born alleged al-Qaeda terrorist is expected today, was expected today, rather, to press for his immediate release, arguing his detention as an enemy combatant. What's the matter now? I don't know. Read the sentence again. The first one. Al-Qaeda? Did I say al-Qaeda wrong? No. Read the whole first sentence again. An attorney for an American-born alleged, alleged al-Qaeda terrorist. Ex- Forget now, it. Now Go you, next... <laughs> you didn't read it right the first time. Read it again. An attorney. Yes. For an American born, alleged Al Qaeda terrorist is expected Got it. to press for his immediate release, arguing his detention. I was trying to figure out what, what he was constitutional. Okay. Joe Padilla, who's got a, another name. Abdullah something rather. Yeah. I can't pronounce it. Yeah. Uh, the Justice Department said that uh, he flew to the United States on a reconnaissance mission as part of the plot to build and detonate a radioactive dirty bomb in the United States. People are now also wondering if this is the same guy that was involved the the John Doe in the Oklahoma City bombings. And they're spreading pictures around now. This is, what do you think? There's a picture of the John Doe from Oklahoma City that they never caught that they quit looking for. Right. Well, hang on. Let me see. This is the John Doe? Right. That's the one that... The drawing that people have saw. This is an ar- artist uh, conception. Right. Okay. And then there's... Unknown accomplice of Timothy McVeigh. There's Padilla. Padilla. No. FBI saying... No. Shirts are different. Shirts. <laughs> Seven years difference. They look a lot alike. But the FBI is going, nah. No. Warm for the shirts. That's how you got your guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Shoulder hair. Um, let's see here. When rating previous breakups, women view the process of ending the relationship no differently. If they're the dump er or the dump e, the same is not true for men. According to new research, men felt the breakup much less pleasant if it's forced upon them. Women simply perceive the breakup of uh, the breakups as negative experiences overall, whether or not they initiate the process. Males are not bothered if they in the relationship because it's not threatening to them. 
But you're going to hide your cats. The 80s alien with a fetish for feline and wisecrack is, po- wisecracks is poised to leave his sitcom storage closet and make a comeback. Remember, we had him on. The uh, furry Who? light brown alien has returned to TV. Alf is coming back. He's going to have his own t- uh, talk show. Um. He'll have guests on looking for their 15 minutes of fame, says Paul Fusco, who uh, provides the voice for the alien and co-produced the old NBC sitcom with a proposed talk show. Hmm. <laughs> but uh, Alf's only going to give them four minutes. As he says, they'll have to find their other 11 minutes somewhere else. So he's going to have his own talk show. Good. And Spyglass Entertainment has nabbed, <clears throat> excuse me, the feature film of rights to the offbeat cartoon series Underdog. You're planning on turning it into a live action feature for Disney. The original animated TV series, which first debuted in 1964, Four on NBC sees Underdog called into action by his would-be girlfriend, Ace News reporter Sweet Polly Purebred. So they're kind of following the lines. Of and who was his uh, arch enemy? <clears throat> Man, I don't remember. Anyway, I'm going to let you down on this one. Riff Raff. That's right. Oh, I believe. Yeah. Okay. And how did he get his superpowers? Telephone booth. No, that's where he changed. How do you get superpowers? I uh, Little pill. Where do you keep it? In his ring. Remember that? The ring would pop up? Yeah. No. It's Eddie. been a while. Been a while, yeah. Who did the voice? That I don't know either. Wally Cox. Oh. You're useless. Well, I didn't watch Underdog. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Uh, let's see here. News and information brought to us by the second anniversary party at the Texas Motorplex in Ennis. We'll see you out there Saturday, June 22nd from 3 until 10 all day long. Not to mention the parade going down there. Live bands, big toys, big drinks, plus... Also, you can win cash with a buddy contest. 4 o'clock and 6 o'clock. Listen for your name. Go to KYNG.com. Click on Win Cash for details. There's news and information. I'm J.D. Ryan on the Talk That Rocks Texas, the new 105.3 FM. More of the Russ Martin Show coming right up. My headphones are on. Will you say what I think you were saying? Yeah. Okay. I'll pay the dollar in a minute. Right. I don't like hearing about people having tumors. Reminds me that I may have one. You don't have one. What is this bump right here? That's just a skull thing. Had a doctor come look at that. Maybe I should go in with him. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. here for exploratory brain surgery. <laughs> Rudy, you, have, you haven't taken any x-rays. <clears throat> Go ahead on. You don't have a quit rubbing it. You're going to get it sore, and then you're going to think it's a tumor. You're going to make That's one. what you did last time. You kept messing with it until it was sore, and then you said, it's tender. <laughs> it felt weird. <laughs> Are you poking on it? Yeah. Leave it. You guys want to go see him, uh, like, Friday? Yeah. Sure. Everybody can go? Yeah. Friday right. after the show. After the show? Yeah. Sure. So everybody's in? I'm in. Did he, did he, is he really going to Waco? Is no. He, said? Oh. he was doing some shtick. It's oh. the Baylor here locally. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they have a hospital down there. I get it. Baylor University. I get it. <laughs> but it's like, they have a university. They have a hospital right. down there. <laughs> you guys will take a card for me, right? When are you going to go? Well, a far year ago. <laughs> What's the point? You don't want to overwhelm me. You don't want to catch it. Yeah, you don't want to catch it. Yeah. I wonder what he's doing. Well, while you're there, you can have him look at your lump. No, I don't want They'll probably be able to spot it as soon as you walk in the door. We need to find out whatever he's doing mm-hmm. to have these tumors come back and see can we get ex-girlfriends to do the same thing. Because <laughs> obviously he's got a tumor farm going on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not fast enough. There's so many people that deserve to have one. Anyway. Yeah, he can just take it out of his head. If, maybe we get the guys at Baylor to save it. And we get some chick to swallow it <laughs> that we hate. We have to cut it out. There. We have too many that we hate. Yeah, we have to slice it really thick. <laughs> really thick. Tumor bologna. Yeah. Eat Take it to the deli. Yeah. What is it? Shut up and eat it. <laughs> should we send flowers? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we should bring them. If we're going to go. Along with your card, we'll bring them. Maybe we should wait and see if he's okay before we send flowers. No. They're $30. He <laughs> he's going to be fine. Yeah, we'll send him flowers. Okay. Who's on the hotline? It's uh, Mary Ann, Bob's wife. What does she want? She wants to talk to you. Oh. Yes, Mary Ann? Hey, Rush. Yes. How's Al? Hey, he's fine. He has a tumor. 
Yeah. You scared? Am I? Yeah. No. It's not spreading, is it? No, I don't think so. Good. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm practicing foosball. What are you doing? Oh, jeez. Can you hear the background? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can't hit a shot when I'm talking on the phone, though. You were talking about somebody with a great big set of cans, and it's Bob's wife. Mm-hmm. Mm. Great cans? Yeah, actually, Did I'd like to... great cans? Yeah, I'd like to see them. They're disappearing. Are they? Yeah. You always run around uh, at parties with them hanging out. <laughs> oh. And the drunker you get, the more they come out. Yeah, that's true. Sorry. But you got great big nipples, don't you? Yeah. Mm. You know who she reminds me of is uh, uh, Meredith Baxter Bernie. You yeah. look at him in the face, mm -hmm. really close. Same size cans. Mm -hmm. It's like a doer from behind. And this is your boss's <laughs> wife. Yeah. You hear me talking? <laughs> <laughs> doer from behind and grab her nipples with both hands. And just shake them like, they're, like they're sheets. Yeah. Okay. So sweet. The guys that, that I'm working with now, they say that um, they listen to your show all the time and you've been ragging on me and I just wanted to know what you were talking about. What did we say? I forget. I don't think we were ragging on her. Yeah. No. You were, like, betting on when I was going to quit uh, my job. Oh, yeah, the... Uh, Wagering. The, the football squares. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Have you, have you quit yet? No, I haven't. Damn. Does anybody have the dates? I do. Dude, right. he does. Hold on a second. How, how much longer do you think this is going to last? Oh, I, it's hard to tell. How long did you keep your last job? Um, what, the one I was doing out of the house? Hold on just a second. Six Eddie, months. Eddie, write all these numbers down and do an average when we're done. <laughs> all right, so the last job that you were doing at home... Yeah. What was that? I was a golf club rep or manufacturer rep. Okay, and you did that at home. You didn't have to show up anywhere. No. All right, so that's six months. Made six months. I don't know I quit that right I, before nine eleven. I don't so. know that I really count that one, but okay. And the job you had before that? Um, that's a long time ago. <laughs> that was when I was in California. Yeah. How long did that one last? A year. Yeah. <laughs> well, what were all these little things that Bob was talking about? You were like training to be a, a personal trainer. Yeah, I went and then to you the decided Cooper Institute, you, became a personal trainer. Then you didn't want to do that, and then yeah. you decided you wanted to be a nutritionist. This is all like in the last three months. Okay. Then a nutritionist, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And were you going to be a flight attendant? Oh, I actually applied to the American Airlines, See. and they, they didn't, uh, I guess I didn't fit the the, uh, the type of girl they hire. Were those that. cans? <laughs> Too many cans? I guess they want somebody with a work history. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I failed the security background check. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they thought I was Al-Qaeda. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are you doing right now, other than playing foosball? Where's Bob? I'm having a cocktail waiting for my husband to come home. And then what are you going to do? We're going to go out to eat. Mm. Then I'm going to go foos. <laughs> <laughs> a verb. To foos. Yeah. To foos. Play foosball against many players. And you don't mind uh, being as hot as you are, having uh, Bob's old man body all over you? <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, Bob. Bob's not that old. Well, I don't want to say exactly how old he is, but when he's naked, I bet he looks like a Sharpe. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, since I've been trained as a nutritionist and physical uh, trainer, yeah. he's he's, uh, he's really firming up. Yeah. Yeah. He's out with a hard body, breast. Yeah. 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 What size breasts are your things? Mm. They're little. No, they're not. They look... Am I wrong? They're 36 Bs. B? B. They are not. They're bigger than that. They're just, they're a nice shape. Yeah. This Bob. Uh, what are the dates we have, uh, J.D.? You have the 17th and the 19th. This is all of June. Correct. What is today, the 12th? Yes. Right. Okay. Uh, I have the 13th and the 6th. 6th is already gone. Yeah. Uh, Eddie has the 11th already gone, 21st. Everett has the 24th and the 10th, which is gone. What's Bob got? Uh, Bob on. had the 23rd and the 25th. The 23rd and 25th. Yeah, none of us think it's going to last to the end of the month. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, Dan yeah. is the 12th and the 7th, which is gone. We were all clamoring to get damn, she the most recent days done. that we possibly could. Yeah. yeah. Bob had the most faith in you, 23rd, 25th. That was all that was left, actually. Yeah. <clears throat> well, actually, I'm enjoying my job. It doesn't pay much, but I'm enjoying it. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll see. You're good till at least probably the 24th. What's not to enjoy? I'm at a beautiful golf course all day, mm -hmm. surrounded by beautiful men. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Please. How could I not enjoy that, that even if I'm making no money? Yes, of course. All right, I have to go. Okay. Lovely to talk to you. Love you. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Nobody else wants to bang Bob's wife? Even if I did, I wouldn't say so on the radio. That's a compliment. It's not a compliment. <laughs> it is. Ask Dan if it's a compliment when you say, you want, do you want to bang Laura? 
Dan, isn't it? No, thank you. By the way, I'd like to stick her on my fantasy hump list. No, she's not a celebrity. Well, yes, she is. Everybody knows who Laura Lewis is. No. Everybody at work knows uh, the, knows her, of her through the station, right? Yes. But she's that's... a celeb. I want her on my fantasy no. hump list. No. She's too old. She's what? Nothing. <laughs> she's too old. Damn. No. Oh, Daniel. <laughs> oh, dear. Welcome to the barrel. Dan. <laughs> Dan. Hold on. Let's listen closely now at Dan's house as we move the microphone close up to his wife's snatch. <laughs> oh, Dan. I'm a dead man. You are a great big battery operated dildo. <laughs> you could almost hear his mouth stop working as he got to the end of that set. Yeah. Oh, yeah. she's too. Uh, uh. <laughs> still going to paralyzed. Yeah. His brain was trying to help him out. Right. His, his, brain, his brain's going, stroke. <laughs> if you know it's got stroke. His brain's going, maybe we can grow a tumor. <laughs> Oh, my God. And the great thing is, even if she didn't hear it, right. someone will tell her. Okay. I'll make All the, the guys at work listen, they'll tell her. Yeah. I think she'll have 50 email, emails by the time she gets home. Yeah. No, she's in the car. She's listening. Why my, you, my pager should go off any time now. Why don't you call her just to say, hey? <laughs> Dan, how long has your wife been too old to hump? <laughs> What I was going to say was... Nah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't. That's just me. I'll tell you what. Go ahead and give it a shot. Let me get you some music. <laughs> Let her rip. <laughs> That's what I thought you were going to play. She is, is past the age that you have... That you have on your list, you you've always said that you won't do anybody over a certain. I said age, today, I did. Uh, I said today, I do Donna Mills, and That's she's true. she's fifty nine. You, have you put her on your list with Donna Mills? Yeah, no, I didn't think about it till today. But I've always wanted Laura on my list, my fantasy hump list. Well, do you think she looks like she's in her sixties? My wife? No, no, actually, she has the body of a twenty year old. It's great. Even more of a reason to stick her on my fantasy hump list. Thank you. Let me know when she calls. <laughs> Break before news. All I right. think I'll just kill myself now. <laughs> okay. Check on traffic, Jonathan Dodge at the controls of the new 105.3 FM Talks. White Lightning. Live video runs on this report brought to you by Cuervo and Ewing Automotive. Ewing, Buick, Pontiac, GMC, on Plano Parkway, East of Preston, and in Garland on LBJ Freeway and Jupiter. Ewing, Buick, Pontiac, GMC, our family taking care of yours in Fort Worth. Northbound, East Loop 820, just before Highway 10, right shoulder. Action off to the shoulder. People slowing down to take a look. Westbound, 930, the West Freeway in Hewlett. Two right lanes are blocked with backup to the university due to an accident there. Northbound, 935, just before no North Loop 820. Part of the left lane is blocked with a minor slowdown due to an accident there. And then the big one today, westbound, 114 in Bellwine has now been reopened with traffic unwinding from a major accident there. Eastbound to Esther's only the right lane is open with delays from about a quarter mile due to multiple accidents there. This report brought to you by Jiffy Lube. And Jiffy Lube, a full service oil change, is just $19.99 with a state inspection. Check your inspection sticker, then come to Jiffy Lube, the well oil machine for state inspection on all vehicles. That's traffic. I'm Jonathan Dodge. And the new 1053 FM twice. All right, thank you, Jonathan. Probably cloudy 75 with a low tonight. Maybe some rain and a cool front coming in tomorrow. By Friday, should be only be in the uh, mid 80s. We have uh, 91 degrees currently. Got some rain tomorrow, too. 91 degrees now at the Talk That Rocks, Texas. The new 105.3 FM Talk. All right. Rob got another snag in the, the cop fire parade. You know about that? No. Now, if you have a parade, yes. you got to have a permit. permit. 
Now, if we're just staying in the city of Dallas, that wouldn't be that big of a deal. You gotta get one in every city you go through. Yeah. Considering it's a cop parade. And you know what? It's not really technically a parade. It's just a bunch of cars driving someplace in a straight line. Mm -hmm. It's not like there's floats and you're blocking off streets because that's what a parade normally does. That's, right. Well, that's what you would want a permit for to, to block off streets and show that you have, you know, insurance and all the, the other crap. We're going to go full speed. It's not like we're going to stop traffic. So really, you shouldn't need it. Well, it is. It is a cop parade. Who's going to pull them over? I don't know. This is more of a convoy. That's the way I looked at it. Yeah. yeah. Just don't call it a parade anymore. I think uh, uh, Plain OPD told Rob, you're going to have to have a permit for this. And if you do, then we can participate. This really is turning into a pain in the ass for something you just wanted to do, just to kind of be thankful. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say we don't want to do it, but it's just... After a while, it gets just to be too much of a pain. And if you got to talk somebody into it, it's like, you know, with some of the police departments, if we got to talk you into it, it kind of defeats the purpose of having it. The parade was for you. Yeah. yeah. What's Rob's extension? Is it 806? God, there's little towns all up and down 35. I think if you drive through those. Hello. Hey, what's, uh, what's up with the parade permit? Uh, well, I put in phone call to see what uh, the process is. What I've been told is it's usually a two uh, two week process to get it turned around. So we're screwed. <clears throat> no, nah, I'm going to see if they're going to waive it because I'm because uh, this isn't a parade. We're just driving from one point to the other. Right. I know. I know. I don't know if they think we're having clowns and stuff or what. And I mean, you know, when I, I spoke to the uh, officer in Plano, I mean. I actually thanked him because he's like, now you got uh, parade permits for this, right? And I'm like, <laughs> no. Maybe he doesn't. At what point did he ask that? Did he ask before or after you explained it? Uh, he asked afterwards. All right, but he still may have a mental image that this is a parade with floats and everybody's driving like 10 miles yeah, an hour. I mean, I'm waiting. Uh, we just got the map done today. And uh, like I said, we went to the American Airlines Center, got that worked out. So I'm going to. And they're going to let us use that as a starting yeah, point? Yeah, we're using lot eight. So uh, we're going to start sending all that out. And uh, I'm just going to go to the individual cities. I mean, I know I can get Ennis. I mean, Dallas hasn't given us a call back whether they want to participate or not. So You hear from Fort Worth? Uh, no, Arlington. Uh, Why is it we get calls from cities not even in our, in our listening area? Houston's called San Antonio, Austin. I think Rob said Beaumont the other day. But Dallas and Fort Worth, we don't hear from. I don't know. I don't know. We've emailed, called, and faxed and haven't gotten any response. So, so th there's no way that they don't know about it. Oh, no, I, I know. I guess they just have their own little system. So we just got to break through it. But, uh, no, it's going to be good. I think we have, uh, like, 18 different departments that are, not Dallas or Fort Worth, right. 18 different departments that have basically said, yes, we have the North Texas Antique uh, collectors, whatever, that are interested in it. Um, collectors are what? Uh, they collect antique fire trucks. Oh, okay. Uh, a couple of uh, different fire departments. So it's it's coming together. This whole freaking parade thing. Permit is uh, I don't. Well, I we're don't. getting we're getting a lot of calls from people that say when they do bike rallies, things like that, they get away with it. Uh, they just call it a procession instead of a yeah, procession. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. There you go. Funerals don't have to get permits. No, that's right. And they block traffic. Right. Just get ready to kill somebody and drive the body out to Ellis County. Yeah. Right. Hey, did you hear anything about the mock? Uh, are, are you going to put it in the front of the parade or what? Yeah, I, th I think it'd be in the parade, but I think I don't think the front is. You like it in the back? Shut up. <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> nice parting shot there. Yeah. yeah. Slick for Rob. It's, um, it's a cop fire parade. Yeah. I mean, we could be in it, but I being in, mm -hmm. being in the back is the right place to be. Mm -hmm. You want to leave with your Harley. The one with no helmet? The one with no helmet, yeah. And Jason's running around in the in the building up here. He's not. I checked his desk. Mm -hmm. There's no helmet there. He stopped me during the last break. He said he's not going to get a helmet. And I, you know, what purpose does it serve to get me this really cool Harley Davidson Fat Boy? Mm -hmm. And I can't ride. Mm -hmm. Well, they got you the half helmet. 
and that was a misunderstanding. Well, um, Harley he Davidson was, didn't know that. No. So he, uh, he was waiting, uh, Jason knew that. Right. He was waiting. It gets complicated. I don't know how much you want to eat this, even on the air, but I don't. I don't really care. Does he have my helmet? No. Okay. It, does it look like I'm going to have it today? No. That's all I care about. Okay. It's his own fault. He had weeks to tell Harley Davidson to bring me one. He's going to have to buy you one. Okay, fine. I, I don't care how he does it. Okay. Yeah, all he was, I know he was is crying about that in the hole. Oh, he can cry about it all he wants. Yeah. I got a Harley Davidson now that I can't ride. I've ridden it six and a half feet into my garage from the driveway inside. Yeah. I'm not riding without a helmet. And I'm not riding with a great gazoo helmet either. <laughs> can I you even... just wear that one until you get the full-size helmet? No. Two reasons. A, it's hideous. B, a is enough. <laughs> it's not. It doesn't cover up enough of your head. It covers up just this part. I got good stuff down here. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Oh, so you put it on, and it's just like the upper, like a bowl. Yeah. Hmm. I really would look cooler strapping a, a Tupperware bowl to my head. <laughs> a colander. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No matter how big and how nasty the motorcycle guy is, big burly guys that on they look. Yeah. <laughs> you got everything going for you. Tattoos, hair, <laughs> tank top. You got that on you. And I've never understood the half helmet thing. Mm -hmm. I don't care where it originated. It just looks stupid. You put one on and you look like you're the next act at the circus. <laughs> uh, I'm my cannon's waiting. <laughs> well, and then you have a wreck and you're doing trying to do your head like this. Yeah, turn it sideways. Hit on the good part. <laughs> Plus, you know, you know, you know, and I'm not wearing goggles because if you wear the half helmet, then you got to wear goggles. Now you look like Snoopy. <laughs> <laughs> Never thought of that. You do. Get your red cape. Yeah. yeah. So I just want the full face thing. Protect my face. Protect my jaw. Everything's cool. Okay. And it's not that motorcycles aren't safe. It's the idiots around you that aren't paying attention to what's going on. People don't pay attention to you when you're in your in a car. Right. You're in a four thousand pound vehicle. Nobody sees you. They don't see you. So what are my chances on a black motorcycle? Mm. Damn it, thing is cool. It's loud. I think they did something to this one because it sounds louder than a normal fat boy. It sounds really loud in the garage. In the, yeah, in the garage. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what it's like to ride. <laughs> I have no idea. Damn, I better look cool on it. <laughs> I sat in the garage last did night. You sit on it naked. No. Okay. I just got this visual image. <laughs> I went out and got on the set on it this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Da, 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 da. What is it, Chris? Oh, uh, yeah. I was just wondering, uh, what are you going to do with all your money when you die since you're not going to get married or have children or anything? I'm putting it in my stinking house. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Thanks. That is so over budget. I I told I told those bastards. Here we uh -oh, go. Here we go. I told them when they were they were. If you, you're not roped into anything. Just keep telling yourself. It that. just pissed me off that I was adamant about it. I went. All right. Here's what I paid for the land. Here's my entire budget. You deduct what I paid for the land from the entire budget. That's what you got to build the house. If you go over that, I don't get no house. And you don't get to build no house. Don't go over that figure. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what I budgeted. I'll tell you how much they went over. Are you ready? Let's go. It was close. <laughs> and this is not a brag because I can't afford it. If I could say I afford it, then it, I would be bragging. Right. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. They went over $250,000. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that great? It doesn't sound better when you say a quarter of a million. Yeah. He comes over to the house today, and he's got all the plans. And so yeah, <laughs> here they are right here. <laughs> all the breakdown. Everything you would want. Everything you want to build a house. I thought you were kidding me when you told me this this morning. Well, we, we didn't figure in that second sink in the master bathroom. Actually, then I go to the back page. Blood as from it, Army. As soon as he hands it to me, I go to the back page. Yeah. And he goes, no, 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 don't go back there yet. Well, he what? knew the bomb he was dropping. Read what you're getting for your value, the, the value for the money. Read through the entire thing first before you look at the... Well, before you do that, it doesn't matter. I can't afford it. It's over budget. I told them before we started. I even told them I could start... <laughs> 
How could they have missed it by that much? I mean, what is it that they weren't counting on? I have no idea. I just, I, it just, it, I. <laughs> <laughs> you're not roped in. You're not roped in. Just I know. No, you're back. missing the point. I got to close on the land. I got to play closing costs. I got to get all of this crap done. And now, because I got to go back and rework the figures in the house, that's going to slow everything down. I'm trying to close just once, so I save a bunch of costs. Now, because I got to go back and jack around with. Oh, wait. <laughs> Let me just show you how much just the pool is. Okay. I guess somewhere along the line, these people just thought, we'll go nuts. Did you ask for anything unusual or different to make it go up so much? No. Like gold fixtures or something? Oh, no, 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 no. Wait till you see the pool. <laughs> Wait, I'll just say. Okay. You ready? This is just for the, this is just the pool. This is not the land that the pool is put in. Mm -hmm. This not any, this don't even count the water in the pool. Yeah. This is the pool. <laughs> we all know about what pools cost. Yeah. Okay. Put in. Yeah. Ready? Yeah, sure. That's what the pool costs. Oh, come on. <laughs> Is that come with the gazebo? On. Yes. Oh, well, there you go. That's the oh. pool with the gazebo. You ready? Oh, my God. <laughs> $128,000 for the pool. <laughs> <laughs> Well, just cut out the pool and you've covered it. No, 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 no. <laughs> Don't cut out the pool. How do you get a $130,000 pool? That's a six-figure hole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the fountain's another 1500 well, No, no. You're, yeah. you're leaving out a zero, I feel certain. No, that's, no, that's that's the fountain in front of the house. 15000 or 1500 1500 for the fountain in front of the house. Oh, mm -hmm. oh. That's, that's in, the, see. in the circular driveway. I've seen that. That's pretty yeah. nice. That's, that, and that with I that house, see. it would fit. A hundred dollars. <laughs> that's ridiculous. <laughs> you can get that's a nice ridiculous. house for that. Are they doing something special for the pool? Here's what it says on the front. Take it home. It's a 30-foot by 50-foot custom gunite diving pool. With a swim-up bar, gazebo, waterfalls, and oversized jacuzzi. Let me read it again and see if anybody hears $130,000 in that. No. 50 foot by 30 foot. Mm -hmm. Custom gun I diving pool, swim-up bar. Gazebo, waterfalls, and oversized jacuzzi. Is that $130,000? Mm -mm. Is it your house? I really thought you were going to say 50, and I was going to laugh. What, $50,000 for a pool? Yeah. I mean, most pools you put in your backyard, am I wrong? 15 to 20. Right. Yeah. That's what they are in the, but, the, the but Sunday going... TV Times thing. You flip yeah. it open, it goes, hey, you get a pool for 19. How come I can't get one of the 1999 pools? You can. You can. Just You're not... just not going to be happy with it. You want? Why not? Well, did, did you ask feet? for this? How big is 50 feet? <laughs> That's pretty big. It's, it's pretty long, isn't it? One-sixth of a football field. state-of-the-art caretaker pool cleaning system. It ain't got no little sweepy thing that goes in it. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. How's it clean it? State-of-the-art, never mind. I don't know. Secret. Very expensively. For $1,500 for the fountain out front, I could pay a black guy to hold a water hose. <laughs> <laughs> I can see a $1,500 fountain. But that pool is ridiculous. Half of that is almost yeah. ridiculous. Hundred sixty for a pool is. I, I don't even know where to start. Yeah. <laughs> and nobody saved this figure. But here's the total cost on a house without the land. Uh, I just pooted. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Can you tell? Yeah. Here's one. <laughs> Go ahead, Pete. You're on the air. Hey, Russ. Long time listener. Followed you all the way from the Eagle. Thank you. Afraid I'm going to have to call you the uh, big puss in boots for wearing a full face helmet on a Harley. You're defeating the purpose. I don't care. And you're probably going to get a lot of razzing from. The I couldn't care. You come to the wrong person if I, if I if it's a if it's a choice between living and looking cool. Guess which way I'm going. Uh, no Anybody that wears, if you're wearing something just to look cool, for, first of all, those helmets don't look cool, the half ones. But if you're doing it just to look cool, you're defeating the purpose. I'll give you that. The do-rag do, does look better, but also, Russ, it's, and I've been down twice on one, so I know what I'm talking about. you got to be careful of those full-face helmets because they weigh, weigh so much on your head that they can do some bad neck damage to you. Well, you know what? I'm going to take, take my chances on the helmet eating up a lot of the concrete as opposed to my face. Trust me, the concrete does win on that. 
Yeah, when it's used your face. Thank you. Good luck on the Harley, man. Thank you. You can argue. You can, I said before I'm a pussy, and I'm not getting on the freeway on this damn thing. Mm -hmm. No. If it was just me, I can handle the thing. The cool thing about the fat boys is, I mean, they're great big, but they're low to the ground, so you don't have to be a big behemoth guy to hold one up. No, I'm not getting on one without a helmet. You kiss my ass. Why not? You're paying $128,000. I'm not pool. paying. That's the first thing that's coming out. I'll get a water wiggle. <laughs> Can you see this gorgeous house with a water wiggle out back? You want to come over to the pool? Uh, never mind. Water wiggle. Slip yeah. and slide. Yeah. Slip and slide, huh? <laughs> right off the side of that cliff. <laughs> I forgot, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> what up, got us How are we doing on Spot Teddy? Getting close. All right. Go ahead, Jason. Hey, uh, Russ, if you want to be real protected, get Jason to pick you up. Uh, they have leather jackets now with uh, Kevlar plates that run down your spine and uh, go over your elbow joints. That's got to be hotter than crap. No, they're really not bad. I wore one on a bike uh, driving to Austin. And uh, they're not that bad, and they're really not that heavy, but... Uh, you you kind of do stupid things because you think you're you're in a car kind of you think you're safe. Yeah, I remember the last time I was on a, a fat boy. Other than Huntsville, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the last time I was on a fat boy, it's like after a while you start, get, and it doesn't take long. Mm -hmm. No, you start getting cocky because I remember uh, I was uh, I forgot why I had one, but I was riding it and I would you know set it to stoplights and car would go by and I'd pull up behind him like I was a cop. It's just, it's just mm -hmm. stupid. <laughs> but those, hey, the jackets are real expensive, but if you want to punish Jason, make him buy you one of those. Yeah, what do those run? Oh, I, I think they're like 1500 bucks. Yeah, I need one of those. <laughs> well, hey, if something happens to me, there's no more spots. I can't do spots for Harley Dates, Davidson hey, and Dallas. the radio station would go under. Yes, they would. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jason. Okay, bye-bye. Did he not even acknowledge that that number is ridiculous for a swimming pool? That's yeah, standard. He said it's a nice pool. He goes, this has got all the bells and whistles. I said the only way that that would be worth $128,000 if it had every ex-girlfriend I ever knew <laughs> floating dead in it. <laughs> the whistles you hear is the wind whisping across your newly porked a-hole. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, what is everybody calling with pool prices? Yeah. I I don't care. I just, just trying I, to help you out. My seventy five by forty foot pool was forty grand. Well, why is mine so much? I think part of it's a swim up bar and the gazebo. Yeah. Those gazebos, man. No, out, out of sight. Can, no. Yeah, the gazebo market is through the roof. Right Twelve now. to fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> Everett, the gazebo market. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're out of sight for most people. I got it. All right, we'll take a break here. We'll come back. Strangled Duana over the phone today when she goes, I I didn't want you to use our builder. She has pushed him and pushed him and pushed him on you. I was standing out there on the property when she said that. Oh, no, he's the guy you need to go with. I, I mean, hold it. What is it, Dan? I got a quick question for you. Just because, once again, you mentioned the helmet. Mm -hmm. Everyone is now calling in to give you helmet advice. I need helmet advice. I'm wearing a helmet. Is it to not wear one? Uh, no, on uh, Harley etiquette, yeah. on wearing your helmet, how to wear your helmet, what brand of helmet. Oh, oh I don't, I'll take care of it. Is there anybody on hold right for that? Uh, I no, I've been cutting them off. Oh, I'll let them through. we got 13 minutes to kill. Line four, then. I just put him on hold. All right. Go ahead, you're on the air. Hey, I just wanted to say the guy debating about a heavy helmet. My helmet weighs three and a half pounds. It's not a heavy helmet, and they make better and lighter ones out there. Is it full face? Yeah. Yeah. Does Bell, a moron. Huh? Does Bell still make helmets? That's I don't know. They have them at the Harley. They have oh. the full face. It's not like I'm not getting a Harley helmet. Yeah. They, you know, they make better ones than what I have, and they're so much lighter nowadays. Yeah, I remember I, my, my first motorcycle when I was 15. Yeah. I had a full face helmet. 
He was right. Those damn things felt like they weighed about 12 pounds. Mm -hmm. Oh, they did back then. It was like wearing a bowling ball on your head, but... Now they've kind of gotten it down. That guy can ride without his helmet because I don't think we need any more of him. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> All right, thanks. Thanks. I don't care about the etiquette. I don't. <laughs> what is it, Jay? Russ. Yes. On your builder, you want a cost plus contract. That way he has to show you the cost of what the subs are charging him. Is that like l material, And then you pay yeah. him a percentage for being the uh, contract manager overseeing the construction. A typical builder is going to mark up everything that the subcontractor does, yeah. mark up all of the materials and everything to make his profits. Right. And that markup can be 22 to 28%. Uh, like the guy that wanted to build the $3,000 riser in your house. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Forgot about that. Because he's going to contract it out to one guy to do the carpet, one well, guy to do the lumber. What is this at the bottom of the contract? It's 12% uh, builder's percentage. It says 12%. I don't know. You'll have to ask your builder. And then there's a that maybe that, his Can that what he's charging to build me the house? I think so. That's a lot. But you don't know that he's padded. Yeah, you don't know what his costs are. No, I don't. How do you do that unless you just go through and check with everybody? Get the receipts. Do well, it on a cost-plus basis like what that caller was recommending. You know what? Screw it. I'm selling the land. I'm staying where I am. <laughs> I had no idea. that I'd, I'd rather have gay butt sex with a yak. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And the other thing is the land people are waiting for me to close. Sure. Can you close this week? Well, I'm waiting on the plans. Can you close next week? I believe the plans will be done. Then they get me to the, everything that's supposed to be done, and here it is, and we're 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 over budget. A bunch. This is absurd. Paint. I need paint for. <laughs> you have to paint the walls. Twelve thousand dollars in paint. Oh Lord! Just for the pool. Are you serious? She rocks nice, ain't it? <laughs> she rocks white. Oh yeah. You need to get the costs. This guy's already padded the costs. Well, that's for the pay. that's for the entire house. Okay. That's this many feet. That's, it's not that's just a gazebo. That's this is a whole house. Okay. Still seems high for paint. I bet it's real nice paint. Everett, I really don't need anything right now. Thanks. You're not locked into anything, and I, I that's not the point. I understand that you're missing the point. Is I've got another financial investment right now. I got to take care of. They want me to close on the land, and I'm waiting on both of these things to sync up. Oh, and, and, if you, and if you, they've been waiting for two months. Huh. And what? if you don't close, yes, I'm sure you're well aware. It's, you're going to end up losing a lot of money on this anyway. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> I really thought about just blowing the whole thing up today and just stopping. Say, screw it. Don't. Cost is digging through the rock. Firefighter pulled. Ah, I don't want to talk to anybody. Oh, we got we got eight minutes to kill. Never mind. I changed my mind. <laughs> yes, hello. Go ahead, Josh. Hey, uh, did you ever think about them having to dig through all the granite to dig your pullout? Josh. $130,000. That's a house. I don't disagree with you. But that is, uh, how deep is it, did they say? Uh, I think the deepest end is eight feet. That's eight feet of granite they got to dig through. Well, you don't know that it's granite. Might be marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know what? I don't know. I, I, just, I've, I was so pissed off today. I just, as soon as he left, I'm just walking around the house going, how could you miss by that much? <laughs> That's not an accident. No. Thanks, Josh. Well, just like. And he, oh, 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 you love this. Oh, no, there's more. Oh, 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 oh. Well, I've already checked with uh, your mortgage company, and they've, uh, they've said you're, you're approved for that. Oh, well, then build it. Build it, build it, build it. Build it. Build it. 
Uh, <laughs> three of them. <laughs> and he shows me the pool, and he goes, "It's a hundred. I thought I honest to God misunderstood him when he said one hundred twenty-eight thousand. Am I am I buying pools for the whole neighborhood?" <laughs> <laughs> he sounds kind of like one of those uh, fly-by-night used car companies that want to check your credit first before yeah. they'll tell you the price of the car because they want to see how much you can afford. Yeah. Now you... they, they it's, 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 I, you know, I don't even care. I could explain it to you. I, they work with a mortgage company in Dewan and Dewan. Oh, I know. I, I had the house built, but I didn't go through this much misery. When they designed your house, were you over budget at all? Mm -mm. None? No. In fact, we ended up getting a few extras free because they made mistakes in our favor. We got like eight grand in extras that they put in the house. Yeah. By accident. They were meant for someone else's house and they were already installed and went, when you take these out? Nope, sorry. Then we'll have to leave them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we were pretty happy with our builder. Today. I'm really thinking maybe they're trying to build a pool for the, uh, the whole block. <laughs> you got the community pool. Yeah, can I, I, want, I want a bunch of kids pissing my pool all summer. <laughs> And it hasn't even started. It hasn't, I haven't turned a sh no. shovel of dirt yet. No, and nothing can happen until I figure out what the hell to do with this. Not a shovel. So I just sent him an email today after I calmed down mm -hmm. and said, I don't care how you do it. I don't care where it comes from. I don't care if it's just the front of the house and then it stops. you got to find some place to take off $250,000. Whether I can, whether I can afford it, which I can't, or not, I don't want to. Beside the point, yeah. I I swear to Jesus, I don't know how people build houses and not kill something. <laughs> well, see, this is the first time he's built this particular house. It's a complete custom job. Mm -hmm. So he was guessing. His excuse is he's going to be guessing on a lot of things. You don't guess that much. And I've asked several times throughout the course of having this built. Can we? Build this house mm -hmm. with the cost of the land and not go over this, much this figure. Because if we went. do, nothing's going to happen. Right. And he said... You got a better chance of squatting bearer bonds out your ass, <laughs> dookie bearer bonds, than you do building this house if you go over this amount of money. Mm -hmm. He just heard this amount of money and stayed underneath that. He just forgot the land. Oh, yeah. He wanted credit because he came in underneath... That amount of money. For the, uh, yeah. But he, the, the total figure. But yeah, it didn't, didn't add the land. I went, right. are you forgetting that I still got to pay for the land? Because the last time I checked with Lake Ridge, they didn't say I could keep it. <laughs> they want me to, like, give them something. You got any bear bonds? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. okay. Hold on a minute. Yeah. <laughs> there. Looks like this last call and we'll get out of here. Go ahead. You're on the air. You never do it. Don't do it. What? You don't deal with a builder. You've got to hire an architect. You need somebody that represents you. I, I had an architect draw the plans. No, but the architect needs a commission to see the whole thing through. To act as the, the building supervisor. I thought that's what the builder does. No, 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 no. The builder's making money off of you. Well, what is the architect going to do? The architect's going to look out for your better interest. Why wouldn't he want to screw me, too? Because, no, no, no. He's working for you because he's getting a paycheck. Isn't the builder you. working for me, too? Yeah, but no, he's not, not really. Why is he the adversary? Because he's his goal is to build you a house and make as much money as he possibly can. I mean, listen exactly. to what he said earlier. That's right. What? His goal is to build you a house as quick and as fast as he can and get out. With as much of your money as he possibly can. That's why he's already checked with the mortgage company and said, hey, guess what? We figured out the optimal way to drain your exactly. bank account between Everett the two of us. That's exactly right. Everett is, I've been in construction for 30 years. Don't do it without somebody to represent you. And what does an architect cost? Well, go to the guy that built your plans and talk to him. Okay. The guy, the architect you used to do for your plans. Yes. And talk to him. Okay. That guy right there can tell you the proper steps to take. Okay. So look after your better half. All right. He could actually act as a broker for the other architect. That exactly. You're going to exactly. It might. <laughs> In a way, you might spend a little more money, but you're going to get rid of all the headaches. I bet I don't. Oh, you will. You really I will. bet money I don't. <laughs> well, 
I wish I could convince you, but All I've right, done this you. for... All right, thank you. I bet a $200,000 pool you don't <laughs> <laughs> I love my apartment. Have I mentioned that? <laughs> You ready for plugs? Yes, sir, I am. Let it rip. To learn more about the Russ Martin Show, to email anyone on the show, to get in the studio audience, to make a donation to the Listener Foundation, or to get on the show's weekly email list, simply go to RussMartin.com. To see the costumed antics of J.D. Ryan, go to JohnDavidRyan.com. Visit Eddie's oddly fascinating website, go to EddieBoyd.com. To contact Everett Newton at his law office, call him at 214-823-LAWS, or go to DallasAttorney.com. To email us during the show, and only during the show, use the Russ Martin Show at Hotmail.com for information about the rest of the station, go to KYNG.com. All right. We'll see you guys tomorrow. See you. Bye. Bye.